and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Hi, this is Jake Toko with Rocky Mountain Construction, and you're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Hi, this is Adam Sandy with Zamperla, and you're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Hi, this is Steve Boney, and I work for Mauer Rides, and I do their sales in North America and in Australia, and you're listening to Coaster Challenge Podcast. I am Jacob Watabe with Weekend Sports USA, and you're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. This is Marcus Lashak, the Roller Coaster Bureau Chief at WGN TV Studios in Chicago. You are listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? Yes, I accept the Coaster Challenge. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? Coaster Challenge Podcast is here. It's time to face your fears. Get that theme park therapy and let us blow your Coaster ears. Challenge Podcast is here. Your fear can disappear. We know that theme park therapy can dry up all your tears. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? Yes, I accept the Coaster Challenge. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? We accept because you know we're not average. You're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. A journey where people become fearful to fearless, all from riding roller coasters. So please, secure your hats and glasses, and keep your hands and arms inside the podcast. It's time to accept the coaster challenge with your hosts, Andrew Locke. Hi everyone, this is Andrew, one of the executive producers of the Coaster Challenge podcast. Got a very special guest with me today. This is kind of a, a little bit of a first for us, as you'll see, in terms of the uh, of the type of coasters this uh, company specializes in. So, and when we think about coasters, you know, modern steel coasters very much dominate most parks around the world. You know, that's what, you know, steel coasters are probably 80, 90% of most parks. There's a few exceptions to that. Holiday World, for example. Uh, Kings Island actually has a fair number of other types of non-steel coasters. But, you know, steel coasters are very dominant, but nonetheless, there's still a lot of passion and nostalgia, especially amongst enthusiasts and even the general public for woodies. And so we certainly, you know, love, love wooden coasters here in the Coaster Challenge podcast, myself included. In fact, in, there are some parks where the, the one of the wooden coasters or the only wooden coaster at that park is my favorite. I can think of a couple of examples of that. So, you know, in the coaster world here, in the modern coaster world, we, you know, we have a lot of designers, manufacturers for steel coasters. The landscape is very different when it comes to wooden coasters in the, the modern age here in 2023. Uh, there are only a couple of dominant players in that part of the uh, coaster arena. And we're going to be talking to one of those companies today. It's a company that I absolutely love many of their coasters, and they have so many, so many awesome experiences on their coasters, which I'm sure we'll get into today. So the Coaster Challenge podcast is very proud to welcome from Great Coasters International, Director of Public Relations, Olivia Hain. Welcome, Olivia. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. I'm excited to talk to you all about uh, what GCI does. So before we get to that, though, Olivia, um, the first half of our interview is a little more personal. Uh, it's about uh, you and your love of coasters and and uh, and so from this to who you are and, and how you got to keep to work for GCI, um, uh, you know, I know you're part of the family. Perhaps you can you get more detail there. But um, why don't you start off with kind of our, our icebreaker question, you know, if you will, is just tell us about yourself and your experience uh, working within the coaster industry. OK, well, hello, everyone. My name's Olivia. I am Claire Haynes' daughter. Um, so. Oh boy, how do I get into this? So my whole life, you know, watching my dad walk in and out of the house, um, didn't know where he was going next, what country, what state. Um, he's going to so many parks, either doing repair works or he's building a whole new coaster. And um, hearing all his stories just really like to a little girl, you know, hearing like, oh, your dad builds roller coasters, like that is the coolest thing. And still to this day at 23 years old, um, you know, people are like, wow, you know, I never even thought about the people that build it. I'm like, yeah, you know, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that. So, <laughs> but... <laughs> But um, I mean, it is it is truly interesting, you know, um, you know, we're all in the business of making money. But what's so cool about this industry is that, um, you know, you're you're building experiences for people. You're building something, uh, uh, setting up an, a thing that builds memories for people. You know, right now we're doing Worlds of Fun, the Zambezi Zinger. Um, oh, yeah. 
And people are saying all the time, they're like, oh my gosh, thank you for bringing it back. Like I met my wife here. Like my, my kids grew up here. Like they're like, this is where I had my first kiss and everything. Like, they're just like, oh my gosh, like you're bringing back something that, you know, was such a huge staple to our community here. Um, not just because of the, what it is, the ride and how uh, thrilling it is, but we've had an actual like a personal experience here. And I think that's what, you know, this whole industry is about is, um, you know, making, making laughter, making fun, making people happy, building those memories. Right. So this, and, and it, I, I'm such a people person. So I'm like, this is such a great industry for me to get into. Um, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't sit behind a desk all day and not talk to people like, that's just not who I am. So, um, but yeah, no, I, I, uh, started working for my dad, um, actually a year ago, and I was living down in Florida and I just said, Hey dad, like not liking my job down here. Um, the job market kind of sucks right now. So what can I do? Can you help me? And he was like, yeah, absolutely. Like, why don't you come start working for me? See if you'll, how you're going to do with it. And then, you know, we'll carry it out from there. And, um, I think it took me a month then. And I was like, this is the coolest job ever. Like I, I was like, I want to know more about this and everything. And, um, so, as of right now, I am the director of public relations and marketing um, for our company, but I wear many hats. I'm learning everything under the table right now and um, trying to soak up all the knowledge that my dad has. Cause I tell, I tell people all the time, he's the walking roller coaster encyclopedia. Like he knows <laughs> everything. <laughs> so I'm trying to absorb as much information as I can, you know, before, you know, he's, he's senile or God knows, you know, so. Right, <laughs> but, right. But yeah, he, um, you know, and now um, my brother is starting to get into the business and everything. And hopefully my other family members um, will come into and kind of use their uh, knowledge and their own skills to uh, enhance the company's growth and um, our uh, quality of our products. So, um, but yeah, the, basically just... Um, just uh, my whole life, you know, watching my dad go in and out, uh, telling about all his uh, excursions and his repair work. And if he's building new rides, like whether it's funny things or serious things or what happened that day that went wrong or, you know, it always fascinated me, but I never, um, never thought I would, you know, get into this. And then, you know, like I said, last year that I did now I'm like, wow, like, this is, this is a really cool company. And I, I'm so glad, so glad that he accepted me. And, you know, now that we're working up, you know, for this to be a bigger family business and, you know, eventually I can take over um, and I'll be the new Claire Hain. <laughs> nice. How exciting. You've got big yeah. shoes to fill, but I'm, I'm sure you'll. I do. I do that. have big shoes to fill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love how, how you guys are a family operation. Um, I personally, I don't work in the industry, um, I just, you know, you know, which is why I love doing the, the coaster challenge because it allows me to quote unquote work, you know, volunteer labor of love in the industry and, and have, you know, be connected to the industry in a more personal way uh, in, a, in a more interesting way is, you know, going to media events and, and again, talking to people like you, you know, because I don't work in the industry, but the company I do work for in my profession with engineering um, is a family company. And I, there's, there's quirks to that. Be positive <laughs> But there's some fun aspects to it, some positive aspects to it. So I, I definitely can relate to kind of working for a family company and first you're in the family. And um, I, I did not realize you guys were a family company. Um, and I guess it's fairly recent, like you said, you started working a year ago. But um, mm -hmm. as I was telling you before we start recording, I'm very close friends with uh, Christian Morgan Duffy from Escape Visuals. I've yeah. known them you know, in there since the early days of, you know, when their company was just getting off the ground, going back to like 2018 or so. And, and I've become closer and closer with them. They live here in Orlando, like I do. And, and, you know, Christian always talking about Claire and how awesome he is. And, you know, they, you know, he, he and Morgan work very closely with you guys. I mean, works with all the manufacturers pretty much at this point, but you guys mm -hmm. are one of the clients and very close with, with you guys. And, and then he was kind enough to introduce me to you at IAPA last year. And, and, uh, you know, I met some of the other family, I met Claire, of course, too, but talking to you, because, you know, I think, I think you even mentioned that you would be the one that I would interview ultimately. Um, I was like, wow, she is a dynamo. She's a spitfire. And that's, we love talking to energetic people. I'm, I'm one myself. I'm, I'm uh, you know, very passionate about life. And so I think, well, I'm sure we'll have a fun conversation here today. So. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So now, um, to, and to be clear, Flair started the company, right? It, it's he, he, so it's been a family company the whole, okay, the whole time. Yep. And you mentioned you lived here in Florida. So do you now live up in Pennsylvania? 
Yeah, I used to live in Fort Lauderdale and then um, just because of working for the company, remote wasn't working for me. I wanted to be in the office every day and Sure. learn the ground. So I, you know, we moved back, but man, I, I did love it down there. It was warm. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I love living in Orlando. I've lived all over the country from New Jersey originally, not far from you guys in Pennsylvania. I've lived in upstate New York, again, not far from you. And and then I moved out west, Arizona, northern Southern California, um, Washington, and kind of four corners, the three corners of the country. And then I Yeah. had to Yeah. the fourth corner, so to speak, with Florida. But it's one of the best moves ever made, if not the best move. But Oh, that's um, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love living here. The theme, the parks, the I love cruises. There's so many cruise ports here. Um, I love, you know, just the a variety of things to do. The weather is a lot of the weather is good. People don't think Florida is good weather. They just think the humidity and the hurricanes, but actually a good portion of the year. Like right now, the weather's amazing, you know, here in the spring. So, and you know, you know how it is. So you live down here. Yeah, yeah. But in any case, and we'll come back to the, the, the Hain family and GCI and all about you guys later on. But the first half of the interview is going to be a little more about you specifically. Uh, and there might be a little bit of GCI in here as well. We'll see. But um, basically what I'm going to do with you here is, you know, you, you know, from talking to David before we started recording uh, and also even the conversations you and I had at IAP a little bit that we're about theme park therapy. That's our mission. And part of theme park therapy is and how people get therapy from coasters. There's two main ways. Well, even three. One is immersion. That's theming and things like that. It goes beyond coasters, you know, just parks in general. Uh, a second way is the literally what happens in your brain um, chemically uh, when you're on a coaster on a thrill ride, you know, the endorphins, the adrenaline. And that is like automatic. That happens no matter what, if you like it or not. And obviously they're good things. So it's it's good. That you, if you don't have control over something, if it's a good thing, that's 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 we have to be thankful for that. But again, those good chemicals that we get. And then the other is is sort of related to that in a way. It's it's, psych, it's uh, definitely psychological. It's neurological. is the facing fear aspect and that and that's something that we focus on the most on on this podcast uh and so as part of that with each guest we go through a fear journey and and sometimes that fear journey it doesn't reveal a whole lot about a person but oftentimes it does and a lot of people don't realize it until they go through the process so that's what some of these other questions are about and then we'll just have fun talking about uh other coasters now uh, again i don't want to presume anything so you know In terms of theme parks and amusement parks, do you consider yourself more of a roller coaster person or fan versus, say, a theme park fan, or kind of where do you fall in? I'm definitely a roller coaster fan. I when I go to any kind of amusement parks, I just skip all the kiddie rides. I go straight to Okay. the thrill rides. So yeah. Okay, you're you're a Thuzi then. Okay, I mean, Yeah. given given your your father's daughter, that makes total sense. Yeah. So, okay. All right. So we'll talk about coasters here primarily. Then that's 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 totally fine. So speaking of. Um, do you remember what your first coaster was and you know what the what, what which one it was? How could I forget? So, <laughs> um, let's see. I was probably about five or six years old, and and off the record here, I hope no one's listening this like this intently. But <laughs> my godfather, Michael Boodley, who started this company with my father. I was very young and he wanted to take me on the Phoenix at Knoebel so bad, but I was like probably four or five inches under height. And you know what he did? He grabbed the back of my pant loop, lifted me up and said, we're good. And put me on and he said, hold on tight. And he put his arms around me and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, am I supposed to be on here? He goes, no, so don't say anything. I was like, oh, okay. Oh my Michael. God. <laughs> but I mean, he held Wow. on to For dear life and but I mean I'm telling you I just I remember going over the the initial drop hill and I was just like oh no like this is this is it this is where I die like I'm not gonna be a girl like getting off this nothing like that and then it was just like this moment of clarity as soon as you hit the bottom and you're like oh well that wasn't that bad And this was awesome. And I, after <laughs> right. that, I was like this little daredevil of my family. My mom would be like, you're a freaking adrenaline junkie at like five years old. What's wrong with you? And I'm like, dude, this is so cool to me. But ever since then, I've just like, I don't know. I just, anytime I see a thrilling ride, I'm like, I want to try that. Like, I always go back to that moment being like, like almost like 
scared out of my wits and just hear my godfather being like, don't worry, I got you. We're going to do this and you're going to have a great time and you're going to love it. And I'll be like, okay, yeah, you're right. Like that, <laughs> that just kind of apply that to my whole life. Like if I'm scared about anything, I'm like, I go back to that moment. I'm like, you know, I had that support then. I know I have support right now and I'm going to get through this, whatever it is, whatever it is. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's wow. So first of all, your godfather, Michael, picking you <laughs> up like that. I can't believe that flew like that, that, you know, but you know, that was, it was, you know, 20, yeah. almost 20 years ago now, right. Right. It was yeah. a different time. But, and then, you know, I have to say, I mean, my first coaster was space mountain here in Florida. Cause I grew up on the East coast and we did the very stereotypical East coast thing came down here for, for the holidays and winter and stuff like that. And so it made sense. I went to Disney world a lot, which was, you know, great, but great thing to do for in my childhood. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, we've, and we've got, we have a lot of people from Ohio, you know, Ohio is a major cluster for enthusiasts, of course. Um, and we've had a lot of people from Ohio on the, on the podcast here as guests. And of course, for them, it's the Beastie or, you know, Woodstock Express, you know, it's a very common first coaster, but, you know, for a lot of people, first coasters are, you know, or maybe a Disney World barnstormer, you know, nowadays um, are, are these kitty coasters and, you know, Phoenix well, not the biggest coaster out there. It's definitely no kiddie coaster. And at five years old, I mean that. And you know, again, the restraints are very minimal, as it's well known for. You know, basically just a buzz bar. And yeah, that's impressive. So you clearly are an adrenaline junkie. This is going to be, yeah. <laughs> be a fun discussion here. I can tell already. So, all right. Well, that's a little bit of a trip down memory lane. We're going to continue, but probably go past the age of five. Um, you know, and I get, I get it. You're an adrenaline junkie, so it'll be interesting to see what your favorite <laughs> thing to you. Um, well, first of all, how many coasters have you been on? Do you keep track if you keep count or honestly, I have not kept track or kept count, okay. but I've, I've been on quite a few. Yeah. And okay. now that I'm starting to work here and everything, when we do any kind yeah. of meeting, if the park is open, I'm like, first thing I ask them, even before I introduce myself, can I ride a coaster today? And they're usually like, yeah, why not? Go ahead. So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's like a little kid in the candy store or something. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Now, have you been overseas to ride coasters overseas? Yes, uh, I have. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you've probably ridden a pretty, pretty good amount of coasters. Good, good. So of all the coasters you've ridden, and it could be, you know, wood, steel, whatever it may be, which one is the one that intimidated you the most? I mean, was it Phoenix or was it something later on? Oh, um, I can't remember the name of the coaster, but it was at Bush Gardens and I was probably around... 16 17 years old at this time and i would i didn't really ride steel coasters um right. they just yeah just like I-, I don't know like some of them were really fun some of them were just like okay this is way too slow way too smooth for me like make it crazy but yeah. um um but there was one coaster i looked at and i just remember seeing this giant drop in the air that it just and i was just like that that looked really tall. I was like, I don't know if that's safe. And then, um, you know, my brother and I were like, okay, you know what? Screw it. We're going to try it anyway. And and it was, it was so much fun. I was just like, okay, well, this isn't that bad either. But um, there was, I can't remember the name of it, but I just remember looking at it and going, yeah, I'm, I'm a little girl. I don't, I don't think that's safe for me, but. <laughs> <laughs> and you were but, about 16 yeah. or so you said? Yeah. Six, 16, 17 years old, right around so that like age. Six, seven years ago. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to play a game here. I'm going to play the game of see if you can figure out which coaster it is. So which oh, first boy. started, Williamsburg or Tampa? Yeah, Williamsburg, yeah. Okay, well, and it was a steel coaster, a tall steel coaster? Yes. Did it kind of do an out and back kind of, and when it was furthest out, like down by the water? Yeah. Okay, so it it sounds like uh, Apollo's Chariot, there being a hyper coaster. Does that sound... That's it. I think Apollo, okay. that's out that that's ringing okay. my ear. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. I just I and I had great for I was hoping to get on the first guess because that's the one that was <laughs> describing it. That's the one that was coming to my head. But okay, very cool. So now that is the tall coaster. It's a hyper, you know, 200 feet and all that. Yeah. Um was it the height that intimidated you? Yeah. So uh, which is crazy, adrenaline junkie here. Um, I'm scared of heights. So what, what goes up must come down and I don't want to be up there for an extended period of time. I want to go whoop, right back. So that's why I love coasters. Cause as soon as you get up there, you're coming right back down. There's yeah. no, no staying up there. You don't have to like wait around for anything. So, um, but yeah, that, that is like the one thing for me, but other than that, no, not really. No, no other thing that freaks me out. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Well, I mean, there are probably, you know, I, I've talked to, you know, I don't, I don't do all the interviews here. We have, we have other producers, uh-huh. uh, but 
I've done probably about two thirds of the interviews here in the podcast, maybe a little bit more. And so I've talked to, you know, upwards of a hundred people, not quite a hundred people at this point. And the fear, the fear we're talking about can be one of or a combination of about four different things. It can be heights, it can be inversions, speed slash acceleration, or it can be just, I'm afraid of falling out, you know, just kind of that. It may not be those other three or a combination of those things. Um, so heights is probably the most common one for me. It was inversions. I wasn't afraid of heights. I've never been afraid of heights, but, and, and by the way, Olivia, don't feel, you know, like you're an anomaly with yeah. regards to, you know, you're, you're, you know, you love your thrills, you love your coasters, quite a few coaster enthusiasts that I know, you know, friends of mine and whatnot are afraid of heights. In fact, I was at a, a big coaster club event this past weekend at Dollywood and, uh, Two of my friends that I was hanging with all day, there was like 11 of us. So call it, you know, 20% of us, basically, a little less. Uh, they're, those two two guys, they are very afraid of heights. Very, very. Um, and in fact, I have ridden the Star Flyer with one of them here in Orlando. And mm-hmm. he did not handle it well. <laughs> he did not handle it well. Um, I have another friend. He wasn't there at Dollywood with us. Big time coaster enthusiast. Big time afraid of heights. When I did the Star Flyer with him, I'm not going to name names, well, yeah. saying, but he was crying. I mean, you know, there, um, uh, you know, another one I can think of, uh, the Orlando Drop Tower, the infamous Orlando Drop Tower was still in operation. Uh, a friend of mine, coaster enthusiast, friend of mine, she works at Universal. She was, she was, you know, she was crying before getting on it. I mean, if she wasn't trying to be dramatic. She was just freaking out. So, yeah. I mean, heights, and it's understandable. It's, it's our minds telling us, no, I don't want to be that far <laughs> off the ground. So, and, and to your <laughs> point about coasters, <laughs> yeah, I mean, coasters, for most people that are afraid of heights, coasters are fine because you're not up there for long or you're not really focused on it. I mean, yeah, there's slow lift hills, and mm-hmm. that's probably the worst for people that are afraid of heights, you know, right? Right? You're not. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So, Okay, so so Apollo's Chariot, that was probably, at that point, the tallest coaster that you had been on, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so how did you feel when you got off of Apollo's Chariot? Um, Like a noodle. <laughs> my my like, strength like, and, 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 like and, vibrating, and I'm like, but like the rush through me, I probably wrote it like five more times after that. I was like, this was so cool. But I, I felt like I just went through the like craziest thing ever my whole body was just like I don't know how to explain it I just felt like jello like I was just like oh my gosh that was insane (laughs) okay now sometimes people describe themselves in that way because they're like super relaxed or like chill is that what it was yeah like because I think it was just like after the whole drop and everything I was just like oh that was awesome that was way better than what I thought was gonna be I thought I was going to like I don't know. I thought I was going to pass out. And I was like, no, that was awesome. So it was just like a whole relaxed feeling, like getting off the ride and just like, I don't know, like you just felt like you did something awesome because you went on something yeah. that is so crazy and you freaking did it. And then you got off and you want to ride it five more times. So like, I was like, yeah, I was very relaxed. I was like, this is cool. This is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that, what you mentioned there also makes sense. We hear this again and again, you know, all, pretty much, there's been one or two guests that we've had on the show where they've never felt fear in their life. I mean, fun, like on a ride or even, and they don't have anxiety in general in life. And they're very lucky. They're very unique, yeah, they are. You, know, <laughs> you know, the genetics or whatever it is. Um, they're very rare though, but you know, the other people, the mass, vast majority of us, one of the things they feel is, is when, when they conquer their fear and they ride that coaster, that ride, they feel great afterwards, you know, forget about the adrenaline, the endorphins, the facing the fear itself. It's just the accomplishment. It's they didn't, they didn't give in. They didn't chicken out. They didn't walk away. They didn't have their friends laugh at them. It was a peer pressure thing. And but they conquered it. They accomplished something. We love, you know, as humans, we love accomplishing things. And we're proud of ourselves because we 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 had the courage to to do it. So that's all good stuff. So so you felt good. So so tell me, were there any, you know, impacts on your life moving forward from that? in terms of facing your fears? Like, did you, can you think of anything that sticks out? Oh, uh, oh my gosh. Uh, we could talk all day on just that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, to point out one, I think definitely like um, 
moving to Florida was a huge um, thing, being all the way up here in Pennsylvania. Um, you know, I never moved away from my family. If I did, I was 15 minutes down the road. So it was um, very difficult to, you know, be like 1200 miles away from everybody. It's, you know, it's not an easy plane ride to get there. You, you know, it's not like you can just hop on a plane and go like it takes a right. little bit or it's an 18 hour drive where I was. So um, that was definitely like the biggest uh, challenge for me. And, um, you know, now that, that I started working for my dad and everything and, you know, going out and traveling with him and I'll be gone for like two months, three months at a time, stuff like that. So um, it, it definitely like, um, calmed me down about it because I was like, you know what, like I'm doing, I'm doing what's best for me. I'm exploring, right. I'm young. I, I should be doing this stuff. And I know my family's happy and proud of me and they're supporting me, but just, you know, just thinking back like, oh my gosh, like I, am I missing out on anything? Like what's going on at home that I'm not there for. And like, um, you know, if God forbid anything were to happen, like it would take me a quite some time to get back home. But, um, I think that's the kind of whole like thing about life, you know, like you're, you're going to do what you need to do. And stuff is always going to happen no matter what you can try to prevent anything, you know, but uh, you can't. So, you you know, don't don't hold yourself back from doing things that you want to do or you like to do um, just because you're scared of what could happen, because honestly, anything could happen. Truly. Right. Right. No, that's great. Great point. And actually, you know, before we get to kind of the beginning of what you talked about in terms of the impact that facing your fears had. Uh, you know, I want to touch upon the last point you made, which is very poignant, um, you know, that when we're afraid of things, a lot of things we're afraid of, we have no control over. So giving, giving whatever that is, attention, energy, you know, this negative emotion, it's really pointless. And, mm-hmm. and just, you know, let, let what happens happens and deal with things that you have control over. Now, yes, that thing you're afraid of, you don't have control over maybe it'll happen and maybe you'll have control over the aftermath something something related to that or whatnot deal with that deal with the things you can deal with when you can deal with them but until that potentially bad thing happens if it happens at all mm-hmm. you, you know, don't worry about it and and so um so when did you move to florida like how uh, the, it was actually last year um oh boy i think it was honestly it a oh, two days from today, I moved there and I moved back in like, I think it was 11 months, but yeah, okay. Okay. yeah it was a both. quick, gotcha. it was a quick time there, but um, yeah, no, it was, it was fun. I loved it there. Miami every weekend can't complain, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. And when I'm in Fort Lauderdale, yeah. I'm, I'm heading down to Fort Lauderdale um, a week from a uh, week from Friday. So, you know, like you awesome. can have now um, for a cruise out of, uh, out of Fort Lauderdale, which I'm excited for my friend and I are going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So awesome. yeah, no, I love cruises. Now, did you get to do any cruises, by the way, when you lived in Florida? Since no, right I wish. Oh, okay. so <laughs> no, fun. that would have been so cool. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I'm great. like right there next to the port. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it's great being local where you don't have to fly somewhere, worry about flight delays and making your cruise. You just drive and you're there. But yeah, exactly. for sure. For sure. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so okay, so that was like late last year. So, you know, maybe five, six years after riding Apollo's Chariot, so you can kind of feel like kind of linking back from five years before that you're know, conquering your fears on a policy area kind of helped you be more courageous as a person in general. Absolutely. And not only for that, um, I recently just got it. Well, recently, as in like three years ago, got into skiing and um, in oh. high school, I absolutely like when I say absolutely refuse to do it. I mean that because I said I'm not even going to get off the lift hill yet. And I'm going to break my neck. Like, I'm not, I'm not even attempting it. And my friends be like, Oh my God, come on. You're going to have so much fun. I'm like, no, nope, no way. So then three years ago, my cousins begged me to go and I was like, fine, whatever, I'll do it. And I did not understand the symbols of like the green circle, the blue square. Oh, and black. No. no one said anything to me. I just thought that meant like different sections of the mountain. So I see this one and it, it, it was named something so like innocent, like bunny hill or bunny trail or something. Oh, so no. I was like, oh, that has to be the easiest one. Well, it had a black diamond. And I was oh, like, no. oh. <laughs> so I'm, I'm starting to go down this and I'm like, this is way harder than I'm like, if this is the easiest one, like I'm screwed for the next one. I'm like, I don't know. How. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going down this thing. And I remember like, just I felt like so confident though. I was like, wow, if I, if I conquer this one right here, I can do any of them then. I was like, if this right. is the easiest 
come on, like, let, like, I'll, I'll figure it out. And I think I started to fall a little bit, but then I just remember pushed myself back up and I just was like, I got it. And then I, I, I <laughs> never touched to get skis in my life. Never, never did anything like that. And then literally that moment, just like, I don't know. I just, I had this aha moment and I, and I love to ski now. I try to go all the time when it's winter and um, my buddies live up in Vermont. So I try to go visit them and, you know, cause they, they work there like longer cause it's colder up there, but um, it's quite interesting. Cause I always think back to like, you know, that time with my, uh, godfather at Knobles and just being like, this is not going to work. And then all of a sudden you just have to go, all right, one, two, three controlled chaos. You know, you control the chaos and that's <laughs> what I think of roller coasters, you know, it's chaotic as heck, but you it's controlled. It's in a very controlled, right. um, design. So that's, right. I, that's what I always try to tell people, you know, like, you know, you, your life feels very chaotic, try to control. It's like a roller coaster. It's going to go like this and every which set way inside and everything you're going to drop and go up, but it's controlled. It will, it has a certain design element to it. That's meant to be. And um, I think that's like, if there's anything for people to take away, it's that right there. Cause that's something I live by. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, you know, coasters are very, like you said, controlled chaos and the control aspect of it. They're very safe, very, very safe. You know, accidents are rare and, and, you know, even when accidents occur, it's, it's, you know, often no one's heard. And so it's very yeah. safe. In fact, I, I've made the claim on this podcast that I, I think that there it's up there with like flying. It's like, it's that safe, you know, in the mm-hmm. modern age. And, and, but at the same time, it, it's so thrilling. And like, I'm like one of my other hobbies, I don't ski, but I, I'm not a big, I don't like snow in general, but that's why I don't live in New Jersey yeah. anymore. <laughs> don't work anymore. Um, and no, no snow here in Florida, yeah. uh, but um <laughs> Um, one of my other hobbies is sports cars. I, I I own one of the fastest cars in the world, and I I'm, I love it. And I actually just got some upgrades installed on it today. And um, I love acceleration. That's one of my favorite things is acceleration. And the thing is, is you know, I I don't drive on tracks. I drive on on the street. You know, I'm dry, You know, I just did the Blue Ridge Parkway over the past weekend. Coming back from Dollywood, it's a great place to drive. You know, there's not a lot of people out there. There's no traffic lights, but still, you know, a deer could run out car could cross over the line you know not even my car i could be driving safely someone else come in the other direction head on collision there's so many things that can go wrong with driving i mean look at paul walker sadly what happened to him again he was a car enthusiast like me i've owned porsches that's he, he died in a porsche um you know so it's 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 a great hobby and it's reasonably safe but again people get hurt people get in accidents yeah. coasters yeah. are much safer than cars and they kind of simulate it you know the curbs are like going on a windy road you know, acceleration, you know, it's, it's like stomping on the gas, you know, with like a launch or like things like that on a coaster. So yeah, so it's controlled chaos. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so, and you mentioned skiing, by the way. So, you know, I know, and again, I mentioned them earlier, Christian and Morgan Duffy, who are from Pennsylvania themselves, you know, I think you're from Eastern Pennsylvania, right? Like c- central, central Pennsylvania. Central. Yeah. And they're from like the Pittsburgh area, Western um, mm-hmm. There are huge skiers, huge skiers. Yeah. A lot of people who live up there are, ha- and I know that you you guys have hung out and done fun stuff, like aside from yeah. business. Like, have you guys have you gone skiing with them at all? No, unfortunately, um, they were up here in Pennsylvania um, while I was in Asia traveling around with my dad. Oh. So I was like, of course, the one time you're up here, I'm like not even near the area. Like I was yeah. so mad, but um, I, I I love them. They are like. I I'm so happy that they work like they do stuff for our company because I mean right. they're the one they are so intelligent and not only that like extremely creative and I've never yes. had an issue working with them like they have always you know if as soon as I call them about something or I have it's something urgent they are right back to me within that day or the next morning it's you know they're they're really great people but um unfortunately no I didn't get to go skiing with them but um when I lived down in Florida I was just so busy down there so we didn't even get to hang out as much oh. so so, um, but yeah, but as, as I like start to like dive more into the company and clear up my schedule, kind of have a more manageable life with this, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I, I told them I want to like hang out with them. We can go like to Canada and everything. Cause I know they're like, they're all into they're adrenaline junkies themselves. So like, they're, oh, they're big they're... time, big time. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> That's one of the things I share with them as well. Yeah, they're such fun people. And yeah, I, I hope that you can get to go skiing with them. Because I mean, I'm not, I'm not a skier, but yeah. Christian, he sends me videos and, you know, he's, I don't <laughs> know if he's shown this to you, but he, you know, he's, he is like me in this way. He likes sharing 
his life with people. And part of that is, is, is enjoying, you know, going out and enjoying, like he's taking me to top golf and stuff like that. We go to parks, but mm-hmm. also sharing your past life, you know, showing pictures, telling stories, videos, and, you know, you know, he's very proud of some of the experiences he's had in his, his life, like I am of mine. And I, you know, I've hung out at their house so many times and he's, he showed, he shows me these crazy videos of his freestyle skiing and aerials and I'm just wild what he's been able to do. <laughs> some of the stuff he still does. And I bet he'd be, a you know, a lot of fun and Morgan too, you know, she's a pretty good skier. Uh, skiing yeah. with them. So we get to do that at some point, but uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I <Yeah>. hope so. <laughs> but in any case, so, you know, w- overall, what you talked about, you, know, you talked about the move into Florida away from your family, the skiing, you know, how riding a Paul's chariot, you know, facing your fears on that coaster kind of was a, the first domino may be a multiple dominoes of these other things. And this is something we hear again and again. I mean, certainly I've gone through yeah, and uh, you know, I talk about this pretty much every episode, but uh, I look at fear as like a muscle, you know, fear is about the brain. It's the mind. So it's all psychological, neurological, but our brain, it may not be like something we can like lift weights because it's not physical, but if we can train our mind that, that it's okay to have these, scary experiences we live through it i think there is something to it again i'm not a neurologist or a psychologist but you know riding a coaster again and again or multiple coasters or you know skiing or you know drop towers drill rides whatever if you do them a lot i think the mind gets to the point where it's like you know all right i'm okay with this uh, because i don't feel fear anywhere like i used to any and and, and more seriously anxiety which is mm-hmm. fear but it's that sort of clinical very where it can be crippling fear not not say getting on a ride but you know being able to get your work done or deal with tough situations in life or job interview or take tests or you know or whatnot and i i don't have anxiety like i used to have a little bit of anxiety i think all of us do with public speaking and i i do that on occasion i have to do that on occasion especially here with the podcast uh, and, uh, I don't, I don't have those problems anymore. I don't, I don't I'm not intimidated like being around a group of people and talking and, you know, and I can be, I, and I, part of that too, by the way, is I can, I'm easily, I can make fun of myself and I can screw up and just point it out, you know, and joke about it. And like, I wasn't like that, you know, 10 years ago or, or yeah. um, and I owe it again, dominoes going back to, facing fears on coasters and riding coasters again and again. And, and that's one of the ways that coasters are good for us is part of that theme park therapy is it'll, it makes us more courageous in life in general. And that's, that's hugely powerful. So yeah. It definitely now, is. Yeah. So, so going beyond fear, um, you know, and I guess there's a low hanging fruit, you know, you know, look at your job and your family, but maybe, you know, besides that, can you think of any other like significant positive impacts that just enjoying coasters has had on you? Oh boy. <laughs> um, well, hmm. Think about this one. I mean, just just like going and, you know, creating those experiences with people. No one likes to go to the amusement park by themselves. Right. You know, so right, it's right. it's fun. It's fun to have that person with you and you get to kind of react off each other's reactions about it. You know, one person might be really upset and the other one has to console their one like, oh, it's OK. You're off. It's fine now. But um, it's you know, it's it's fun to see each other you know, at your almost like vulnerable point, right? Like you have, like, it's a controlled chaos thing, like we were saying, but you don't have much control when it comes to when you're going around in that train. So you're putting yourself in this insane, vulnerable situation. And then you're, um, you know, you're sharing, sharing that moment with your friend. And I think that is like one of the coolest things because, you know, it, it, you have to kind of go through something terrible or like, I don't know, but to uh, have that same experiences with your, um, close people, your friends or anything like that. So, um, but anyway, like, I, I just think like, I don't know, just like having the whole idea of, um, you know, the coasters being fun, you know, the riding of the coaster is fun. The, the adrenaline you get, the, the thrills and the, the, the feeling of being a little kid again, like, oh, I want to ride again. I want to ride again. Let's get back in line. Let's go. Let's go. And, um, you know, you could be <laughs> 10 years old, you could be 65 years old. And, you know, I've seen so many different people still act that same way. So, um, but yeah, that's, uh, I saw I had to say really about that, but like, it's just, um, you know, it's just, it's just, it teaches you to be vulnerable. It teaches you to have fun in life as well. You know, don't, don't, 
don't back out of things because you're you're unsure or um you're like oh this might not be that fun or this not no like try everything try everything because sure. you never yeah sure. no that that's a that's a really good point and you know and yeah i mean obviously going to the parks and doing the coasters and things you know it's it's about having fun and so it's you know it's positive in that way and significant in that way and you know i mean you know other hobbies and i'm not trying to you know pick you know and pick on anything but like I mean, it, it, you know, is stamp collecting as fun as coasters? Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, again, there are people that collect stamps and they get excited to find a rare one and all that. But yeah. I mean, if you enjoy stamp collecting, nothing wrong with that. But I mean, absolutely, can it be as exciting as coasters? I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, there's different <laughs> types of hobbies that have different different pluses and different mm-hmm. types of enjoy, enjoyment. But certainly, you know, theme parks and coasters are one of the more i have to be one of the more exciting hobbies you know maybe you know skydiving is certainly more so but you know i can't think of too many beyond that um mm-hmm. that are, are more thrilling i mean you know extreme sports you know that sort of thing mm-hmm. um, but you know but there's a lot of other hobbies that probably aren't as fun and exciting as, as coasters and, and yeah so I, so I get that and you know being adventurous and so forth and you, you also talked about kind of being with others and the, the social aspect of the hobby is great too. absolutely it's something absolutely. that comes up again and again and some of the most fun times I've ever had are you know weekends or like special events you know park special park events and things like that or just trips you know just going on like park trips like I've done did a couple of European trips for parks last year which was amazing and uh, in fact, we might we might talk about that later because GCI factors into one of those one of those a couple of those experiences. But anyways, but um, yeah, just you know, it's all it's all so fun and and so many so many positive aspects to it. So I I, I get what you're saying for sure. So uh, you know, you talk about the controlled chaos. So and I love love that term you used. Uh, my next question this is always a fun question. Is you know related to that controlled chaos, but it's where things go things are not even necessarily working like normal like where something even crazier chaotic happens and so can you think of a any kind of crazy moment or the craziest moment you've had on a coaster like something oh wild it may not be the mechanical <laughs> part of the coaster the coaster may have run fine but something with a person on it you know we've had all kinds of crazy stories i want to kind of lead you in a direction here oh but. man um well, I think the funniest one was watching a grandfather um, get vomit all over him from his grandson. I think that to me, oh. I, I I laughed so hard. I felt so oh, bad. No. I felt so bad, but I, I could not stop laughing. I was just like, oh my gosh. And we were just like only halfway or just started like riding to like nothing really happened yet. The kid just like leaned over, threw up on his grandfather and he was like, are you serious? Like, I oh my God, I oh, lost it. No. But <laughs> Lost How did the grandfather but, handle it? I mean, you could tell he was not happy, but there was like right. nothing we could do. So he was just like, all right, well, he, well, guess we're riding it. And he was trying to like, <laughs> start, like scoop it off and everything. Oh my gosh, that was hilarious. But um, I think one of the other crazy times for me is, um, oh, you're going to have to help me out again. But it's like, sure, sure. Uh, it's uh, so there's t- two times this happened to me. The one coaster was, I think, Haggard's in Disney. Is that the motorcycle train one for Harry Potter? Uh, Do you know? You, so you mean your Universal like Islands of Adventure, right? Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, the motorcycle one, that's Haggard's. Yes. Okay, yes. okay. So you know how that when you're going through and it drops all yes. of a sudden? Yes. They have yes. one at Bush Gardens too. Well, I didn't know that was like a thing coasters did in my head. You don't move the track because that's that's what's dangerous. Well, okay. So I remember my cousin and I were just back and forth talking, talking, and then all of a sudden the coaster just drops right through the floor. I didn't know. I I thought that was like something wrong just happened and we're just stunned. Like jaws yeah. dropped. Like what <laughs> did happen here? And we're, we're like, Oh my gosh, we're gonna have to evacuate. It's dark in here. Are we like below this, sh- like the station? And um, all of a sudden just starts taking off again. We're like, Oh my gosh. Like we, we didn't even like scream, smile, nothing on the rest of the ride. We were just like stuck and baffled by what just happened. <laughs> but- <laughs> I remember calling my dad after I was like, Hey, like, is this normal? Like, do they just have a separate track below? Like what's going on here? (laughs) But that had to be one of the craziest times. Um, And oh, I guess my last one would have to be my brother and I were over in uh, Europa Park. Um, This is when we 
built Wudon. And yes. uh, they have the one launch coaster there. And my brother and I were very young. We didn't know German. And we didn't pick up the context that it was counting down in German. So we're just like, what are they saying? What's going on? And then all of a sudden the coasters go and takes off and it looks like you're about to hit the the, the track that's vertical to you and just shoot right up and um I just remember we like I grabbed hands and were like screaming we had so much fun though but we looked at each other after the ride I'm like did you know that it was gonna do that he goes no he was like <laughs> I don't speak German I'm like me either I was, oh my gosh but we had so much fun with that that was that was probably one of the best times riding a coaster truly Nice. That's, um, wow. That's, that's awesome. That's a lot to unpack there. So first of all, the Bahamani <laughs> story, the first story, we've not had that one before. That's a new one. I think I don't, we've, had, we've had, uh, yeah. So that's, I mean, yeah, that's pretty wild. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, talking about Verbolton, which is the, uh, the one at, at Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, the, yes. the drop track, yes. which I've been on. So it's interesting. Um, we, I don't know if we've had that as a craziest moment, but in a way it makes sense because, um, so there's a thing amongst coaster enthusiasts, forget about like the general public, just mm-hmm. the people that we usually have on this podcast where, and I'm like this, where I, I don't watch POVs before I ride a coaster. I like to not have spoilers. And I find that enthusiasts, I, I can think of one friend of mine, especially like big time avoid spoilers. Like we don't want them. Yep. And so, and, and yeah. And meanwhile, along kind of coupling with this. Um, one of my favorite things to do, you know, especially like here at my home parks, like I live five minutes from Universal here in Orlando, is to take friends to parks when they haven't been to that park before, or at least they haven't been on a coaster there before. Give you an example. Um, I've got a friend coming in from uh, Western Pennsylvania, uh, him and his mom, and uh, they're coming down next week and they're going to be going to Universal for their first time, at least for, for the for the son's first time for Matt. But um, and I was just talking today, on, you know, we're DMing each other and I was, you know, telling him how excited I am to experience these things with him for the first time. And um, so. So, again, a lot of enthusiasts, they don't know about Hagrid's drop track. They don't know. Yeah. And and so I've ridden Hagrid's with several friends, enthusiast friends. And they don't know. And I love and when it. So when we get into back into that building and, you know, it's getting dark, I look, and I, <laughs> say, I, say, I hope it's like my eyesight's adjusted quickly so I can see them. And I look over to them left or right, whatever the case may be. And I just watch as it happens. And then the reaction afterwards and like the you know, jaw drop, you know, the whole thing. So <laughs> I, I, you know, I totally, I totally get it. That's yeah. It, it, that's yeah. yeah. Um, and then I mentioned earlier, it's funny you bring it up right away, um, that I went to Europe a couple times last year and I said I'll be able to tie in GCI a little bit. Um, one of my GCI stories from Europe I wanted to maybe relate to here while talking to you today, because 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 you're you know part of the family, you work for GCI, um, is uh, I love Europa Park. Europa Park is my number five park in the world. I rank parks, you know, my favorite parks. And um, a lot of your better parks, they're known for their one two punches or maybe one two three punches um where they have like several like you know enthusiasts we have terminology you know i don't know if you've heard this before but like we talk about elite coasters you know mid you know not so great coasters but then like a lot of us talk about you know god tier coasters like your top of the top of the top and you know when you have a one two punch we've got a couple of those god tier coasters of top tier coasters and uh europa park again is such an amazing park because it's got Forget about the coasters. It's got so much, you know, the food, the theming, the the dark rides. You know, there's it's a one of the most gorgeous parks in the world. It's a huge park. So oh, many right. land. I mean, so much. It's just so awesome. Such an awesome park. And um, but it has that, in my opinion, that one two punch, uh, where it's got Wodan and Blue Fire right next to each other, and the two of the best coasters in that park. And they're so fun. And, you know, you talk about Blue Fire with a launch and you and your brother were, were surprised because I guess, was that a was that a number of years ago, it sounds like? Yeah, so it was, it was just built. So that was 2013. So I was about nine, 10 years old when I was there. Yeah. Right, right. So you, so you hadn't experienced that before. And, and yeah. then, and then Wodan, you know, again, Blue Fire is, I think is one of the most unrated, underrated, excuse me, um, mock coasters. Uh, and it's just, I think it has some great forces. It's a super fun ride. But sitting right next to it there is Wodan, which my understanding, you probably could tell me this, uh, Olivia. My understanding is that Wodan is the tallest GCI coaster. Is that right? 
or one of the tallest? Hmm. I, I think it's one of the tallest. I don't want to say it's the tallest, Okay, so but it's up there. I Okay. think it's, yeah, yeah. Cause I, I Yeah, cuz yeah, I feel like I just heard someone talk about this the other day too. So I, if I get the correct wording, I will come back and let you know. Okay, I, I think sounds it is good. just one of the tallest. Yeah. <laughs> One of the tallest, at least. Okay, okay. Um, uh, you know, and it's got a fun layout. It's a fairly long ride. Uh, it's one of my favorite GCIs. I, it, you know, I, I again, I rank coasters, and I forget where it ranks in my rankings, but it's um, in, 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 it's in like the top twenty-five. And I've been on uh, heading towards six hundred coasters at this point, like five fifty. I'm at about five fifty. So it's it's a great, great coaster, and I think another one that's underrated. But again, those two right next to each other, such great rides. I, you know, one of the few other parks I can think of where they're not only does it have like that one two punch, but they're like basically next to each other is right here, Islands of Adventure with Hagrid's you mentioned and Velocicoaster being like right next to each other. But um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, those are some good crazy moments. And I actually kind of love that you shared something that is supposed to happen on a coaster is a crazy moment because, yeah, I mean, there are only a couple of drop track coasters in the world, 13. Uh, Verbolton and Hagrid's, I think, are the only three. I mean, there's so it's again, we don't have the spoilers, you know, yeah, you get, <laughs> a crazy moment. It's like that's not supposed to happen. Wait a second, where's the track going? Yeah, I get mm -hmm. it, I get it. So, um, you know, we're talking a lot about coasters here, of course, and you've obviously, you know, we talked about how you've ridden quite a few all over the world. Um, what would you say is your favorite coaster and why? Boy, um, let's see. Well, I might have a different answer for you in a couple months when the Zambezi Zinger gets built because I'm dying okay, to ride okay. that one. Dying. Yeah, that to looks ride. awesome. I'm looking forward to it too. Yeah. So that might be my new favorite, but I'll, I'll hold off on that one. But I got to say, my favorite for right now is the Texas Stingray. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is so cool. That is such a cool coaster. <laughs> I mean, it it goes, I mean, it is so fast. And like what's cool about wooden coasters is like, you know, it's not it can't, it's not going as fast as a steel coaster, but because of how much it shakes and everything, it's just it yeah. feels like it's going just like that. Um, but that's my yeah. favorite wooden coaster. Now, my favorite steel coaster, all hands down, hands down is Velosa Coaster. Nice. I Oh my gosh, that was the coolest thing I've ever read in my life. I was like that. I love that. And just walking, even just like the not the ride itself, but like walking in and how they have the designs, like the theming is like all the different movies, Jurassic Park movies. They take like certain design elements from each one and um put it through the walkway as you're going to line up for the coaster. And oh yeah, I love yeah. the part where they have the the one velociraptor like head in the cage and he's shaking it. And yeah, I I, I knew it wasn't real, but like something in my body was like, just keep an eye on that one. I don't know why, but keep an eye on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Velocicoaster is 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 my number two overall. Okay. It was number one for a good couple of years. Uh, it took, took something quite special to uh, dethrone it, but uh, it's still one of my favorite coasters. Absolutely. It is my, my favorite coaster in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, you know, the ride dynamics, the forces are fantastic. Great air time and great sense of speed and acceleration, especially that boost launch. You know, uh, it's one of my favorite parts. But, um, but yeah, the theming is part of it too. And theming to me matters on a coaster. I'm a, I'm a theme park guy as well as a coaster guy. Uh, so that theming, and I love the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World movies. So yeah, like you know, just all the all the theming, they just hit it out of the park. Um, uh, you know, with, with Velocicoaster. So I can definitely relate to what you're saying there. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, Zambezi Zinger, so I'm looking forward to that one too. That one looks really awesome. I'm curious about the spiral lift on a wooden coaster and all that, and and just the layout of it looks really fun, the kind of terrain coaster aspect. Yeah. Um, but and I've never been to World of Fun, so I, I definitely want to go there. I was hoping, but so you know, timing doesn't always line up. Uh, I I do road trips. I love road trips. You know, I love flying places, but I love road trips. And uh, I'm doing a longer road trip, and it's the kind of like where I work during the day, you know, because I can work from anywhere. I work remotely. I'm a sales guy. Um, uh, you know, work during the day, during the week, you know, from my cafe, from my hotel, from, from my car. I can call internet. I can be on my email. I can, you know, have my web access. That's all I need. Uh, but then in the evenings, especially in the weekends, you know, visit people, visit parks, you know, et cetera. And I'm going up to the Midwest for a few weeks doing this road trip this year. 
Um, and it's, I'm doing it in like less than a month. I'm leaving and I'm going to, I know I'm going to miss Zambezi Zinger. It's just because I, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be probably opening like a, maybe a few weeks or a month after I, I am up there and that's okay. I'll go like next year, maybe later in the fall this year. Um, and, but you mentioned also Texas Stingray. I've been to SeaWorld San Antonio, but it's been six years. So oh, wow. Yeah, because I mean, I just don't go to Texas. I used to go to Texas a lot, but not not anymore. And my plan is to do my big. I do one big road trip a year, like a big several week road trip these days. So my plan for next year is to do the road trip out west and go uh-huh. like Texas, Colorado, you know, Utah, that kind of thing, and get back to the parks in Texas, you know, especially. Um, uh, uh, sea roll San Antonio because I've heard you're not the first person to sing the praises of Texas Stingray. So mm-hmm. uh, I, I really and I love GCI coasters. I'm very curious to see what basically is one of the most the one of the newest you know uh, that's already already uh, in operation of your coasters. So um, yeah, now that you've mentioned it too, I'm I'm really curious now. Uh, you mentioned Velocicoaster again as your favorite steel coaster, and you were talking about Europe. Now, have you been to Fantasialand in Germany? No, just Europa. Yep. Yeah. And it makes sense because Europa has the GCI. So it makes sense you guys would go there for work. But Fantasyland, it actually doesn't have any wooden coasters. Never thought about it before. I mean, I think it maybe had in the past. I think they had a wooden coaster, but they don't have any now. They're, they're really space starved there. But uh, yeah, maybe you guys can get a, a, a really nice GCI in there or something one day. That would be Yeah, cool. put a good word in for us, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You never do. Yeah. Because I mean, my opinion, and this may be a little controversial, but, and, and, you know, I guess maybe it's okay to mention the competition, but I mean, I like my RMC coasters, you know, the hybrids, okay. but those don't count as a wooden coaster, number one. And with about what I'm about to say, in my opinion, a, a, a park, a true park has to have, and for, for the future, for the farthest out in the future, I can think of has to have a, a true wooden coaster yeah. uh, to have a complete collection. So, and, you know, it's, it, and it, that's something that kind of separates amusement parks from theme parks here is, you know, your Disney, your Universal Parks, they don't have wooden coasters. That's just, they don't do them. It's just not, they're not fit for them. But we're talking about amusement parks, the classic amusement park. Again, the wooden coaster, I'd like to think is here to stay. I hope it is. Yeah. I hope um, so too. I hope so too. It's yeah. like, you know, it's the first thing, basically the first thing you see when you walk into a park, you know, it's like the big centerpiece and then everything around it kind of flows with it. Right. So it, I don't know. My dad yeah. and I always say it's like, it's this huge, like, like art, like it's, it's a statue that was built for like meaning of love and have fun and excitement. And, um, you know, it's a constant upkeep and that's what keeps the beauty of it. You know, you can't just have something awesome and then not ever do anything with it again like you have to constantly upkeep it right so um yeah, i think that's yeah. what's so cool it's like this very like i think wooden coasters are a great symbol of um uh, greatness and beauty within a park and just you know like within itself like it's its own art piece in itself yeah oh yeah i mean they are I, yeah they are a work of art and a lot of them are you know the older ones are historic landmarks but you know you also brought up a good point that i mean obviously steel coasters require maintenance but a lot of that maintenance is not all of it, but a lot of it is the trains, you know, the uh-huh. track that they need maintenance on a regular basis, you know, painting and, you know, there are things that come up with that and the track wears out eventually. But with wooden coasters, yeah, the trains are part of that. It's certainly maintained, but right. the track, you know, you got to walk the track every day and, and replacing, you know, certain sections, retracking areas. And, and I look at it as now some parks might look at it as, you know, it's a lot of work and money and all that, but um, you know, but I think, some parks, um, and I know they don't have they don't have a GCI and, and they need one um because they love their wooden coasters is holiday world. Um, you know, they look at their and this is why I look at it too, their upkeep of their coasters. It's it's a labor of love for them. And I that's the way I think people should look at it, and parts should look at it as is their you know, it's it's maintaining these amazing machines. Yes. And you know, giving people joy because of that. Again, that's part of that labor of love thing. Um, uh-huh. And it's a huge difference when you have a park that maintains their wooden coasters and that doesn't. Um, and and um, actually, this is a good point. This is a good time to bring up something I promised you I'd bring up earlier <laughs> before we started recording. Uh, so uh, I'm not saying this because you and I are talking today because I, I couldn't <laughs> help but this happening the way it did. Um, I, um, I'm a member of two coaster clubs, one of them being Coaster Group. 
And uh, uh, shout out to Tim Holloran, who has actually been on the podcast here. He's the president of Coaster Crew, does a great job of his events. I've been to several of his events. And um, one of the first events, actually literally the first event I did for Coaster Crew was the Dollywood event that happens every spring last year. And I loved it, had so much fun, did it again this year. And it was literally this past weekend. I just got back from, from Tennessee. And, uh, you know, last year, um, one of one of the friends of mine that was in my kind of group that we spent all day together uh, had never been to Dollywood before. So we did all the coasters, including, of course, Thunderhead, the GCI that's there. And I, I love Thunderhead. I'd been on it before when I'd been to Dollywood the first time. And it was it's a fun coaster. And one of my favorites. <laughs> it's one of it's, and it was one of my favorites. Absolutely, it was a great coaster. I get love the laterals. Great. Uh, and then you know, again, that same person, myself, and, and an even bigger group this year, this past weekend, there were like eleven of us uh, most of the time. Were together riding. You know, we didn't ride all the coasters there. We rode favorites, and you know, we did the you know did the train, did some favorite things. Uh, and one of the coasters we rode during the day was Thunderhead. And we had all heard, because again, we're all Thuzies, we had heard about the retracking. Now, by the way, I want to ask, and there's no wrong answer, was GCI directly involved in the retracking work on Thunderhead this past year? Um, I Yes, I do believe so, yeah. I do believe so, because yeah. I, I can just hear my project manager talk Dollywood, <laughs> Dollywood, Dollywood. So I, I want to say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep, makes sense. I mean, I figured they were, I mean, it's not always the case, you know, sometimes the parks take care of it themselves, but... My understanding is, and based on my experience, is is that it was a major retracking. and would yeah. make sense that you guys would be involved or consulted at least. Um, Absolutely. But yeah. So I had not been back to Dollywood since last March when we had the event last year. And I, you know, we wrote it during the day, later on the day, and I was like, wow. I mean, yeah, that ever, because people are talking about, oh, yeah, it's been great since the retrack. Best rides ever on it. Well, the story yeah. doesn't end there, Olivia. So... <laughs> There was some fate, you know, sometimes fate works in mysterious ways. And the uh, the ERT for this event is typically in the evening. Okay. And I will tell you that because Coaster Crew Tim, he loves naming his events, like fun names. And the name for this event is the Lightning Rod Roundup. It has some good alliteration to it. And typically Lightning Rod is the evening ERT, like an hour of ERT on it. And that's what we got last year. And it was great. And I do like like lightning rod, but even oh. last year, even even last year, um, having ridden lightning rod, Thunderhead was still my favorite coaster in the park. And I'm again, I'm not just telling that because I'm talking to you. you can ask <laughs> question, I'll tell you um, again, I love Thunderhead, and that was based on my experience last year, etc. Well, as it turns out, um, this is not a shocker to, to most enthusiasts. Lightning rod was having issues, you know, with that launch and everything, and so it never was up uh, that that day, that Saturday last weekend. So mm -hmm. because it's down, Dollywood is a fantastic park. And, you know, like any good park, they had an alternative for us. They're not just going to not give us ERT. And guess what? We got our ERT in the evening on Thunderhead. And so, and you know how oh. we are if we don't get our ERT that we're supposed to get, people are going to be sour and yeah. upset. But, you know, you know, it's like, man, I paid for this ticket. And, yeah. you know, but, but I can tell you, there were no rounds that night. What wound up happening was we had an hour of ERT from eight to nine o'clock. So it was about, about half of that was in the dark. You know, the first half was like twilight and it hadn't, sun hadn't set yet. And it was very much like being at a Hollywood nights, you know, being at a ma like a major enthusiast event, like hardcore because that ride warmed up through the day, you know, plus having the, having, you know, with night rides, part of it also, it's not just the physical, the visual, we can't see as well. So the, you know, you talked about how wooden coasters, they seem faster than steel coasters because of the, the chaos, the increased chaos, the, the, the kind of how they shake. Um, and that's really true. But also at night, you know, on a wooden coaster, it's like the most extreme. You got all that stuff you have to begin with. Plus you can't see as well and you can't see as far ahead. Uh, but I, Olivia, we, all of us, we were talking about it, you know, just in mis in disbelief um, of how much we love that ride, uh, and and th those rides plural. You know, we got like a dozen rides, most of us, yeah. had, and that were and ERT, and we were freaking out. I mean, a bunch of my friends that I was with, that eleven group of eleven people, they're from Kings Island. That's their home park, and they love their Mystic Timbers and another GCI. And I love Mystic Timbers as well. One of my favorite GCIs, but that night, Mystic Timbers. 
it got the axe. Thunderhead became their new favorite. And it also became my new favorite GCI. And it shot up my rankings. I think it's number 16 for my overall coasters now. Again, over um, you know, over 500. Um, just, I mean, the laterals were great, but it just, it's running so much faster. And one of my favorite things on wooden coasters, absolute favorite things. And Voyage, again, from another company I know, it has this. I never saw Thunder and have this before is where you get those crazy ejector moments where like the coaster where it feels like the train is coming off the track. You go through that sort of hole, you know, and that, that dip. And there was several moments of that on Thunderhead and never had anything like that before on Thunderhead. Yeah. And it was amazing. Yeah, just amazing. So yeah. um, I, I tip my hat to you guys and to Dollywood for the work Thank you did. You. And, you know, and again, labor of love, you made what 80 or so enthusiasts that wrapped this event just so happy and so thrilled so awesome. <laughs> yeah so it was just anyway i had to tell you that story and it was a great 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 time to to, to tell that story. yeah story. and I, you know that's funny because thunderhead is like it ha- it, you know texas stingray and thunderhead they kind of battle each other for number one in my books but okay, i'm glad you it. said that because i i love thunderhead and i um used to when my dad was building the ride many many years ago um i remember we used to spend our summers in tennessee and oh my gosh we had so much fun like watching the guys work or just we would go out and enjoy the park while they had to do all the dirty work so <laughs> oh yeah but, oh yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, I, I have been now to Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg, you know, Dollywood three times. Uh, I, I went there the first time in 2021. So I've been there like once each year the past three years. And I'm on that Midwest road trip. I'm planning to spend time because I'll be going through there, through Tennessee. And I'm planning, you know, kind of going little detours. It's part of a road trip is, you know, it's the journey. Take little detours to stop at places. And and I'm planning on spending some time at Dollywood on the way up and maybe on the way back. And in, in the Pigeon Forge area, because I love that area so much. I mean, Dollywood it's beautiful. is beautiful. Oh, it's yeah. gorgeous. I love the, the air there. I mean, I love living in Florida, but the air in those <laughs> mountains is so clean and clear. And it's just, yeah. it's different. It's just different, different vibe too. And then, but you said the mountains, it's beautiful. And there's so many fun things to do. There's great restaurants. I mean, it, it's, again, yeah. I wouldn't live there because I like living near the ocean you know, having that cruise option, the beach and all that. Yeah. But if I had to choose someplace other than if I couldn't live near the ocean, you know, for whatever reason, Tennessee, I would consider it because it's it's just, I, I love that area. It's so beautiful. It's, it's, it is very beautiful. Nothing beats the mountains, truly. That's where, yeah. that's where we live up here. And uh, when I moved to Florida, like, don't get me wrong, loved it down there. Loved that it was 90 degrees all the time. Like, couldn't beat it. But I did miss elevation and I never thought I would, but I, when I come back home, I was like, oh my gosh, like to just drive up a mountain and come back down and just like coast and everything. And like, you just don't have that in South Florida, especially South Florida. Like everything's just highway and straight. Yeah. Like the only mountains you're getting is like a ramp through the drive through Like that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. And you bring up a good point. I mean, the one thing I miss from living in state California where I lived before here in Florida is the flatness here. It's because yeah. again, I love my, I, I, my other big, pretty much my other big hobby after or alongside coasters and parks is, is my, my cars or my car singular. And my car is not only one of the fastest cars in the world, it is the best handling car I've ever had. And so, yeah, part of going to Dollywood wow. <laughs> is enjoying the Blue Ridge Parkway, either on the way there or on the way back, usually not both ways, because it is a longer way to get go that way. But, and also, you know, time of day too, I, I you know, because usually when I'm going up there, I'm getting up to Tennessee in the nighttime because of, you know, I'm leaving here in the morning and I have to stop to work on the way and all that. But, you know, coming home, usually I, I, I leave, you know, I'm up there already and I'm leaving in the morning. Or, and so it's daytime when I'm going through the area, you know, where the Blue Ridge Parkway is. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's, it makes sense for me to go on the way home. But and that's what I did this past weekend. And I you know want, love driving those mountain roads. It's some of the most beautiful, some of the, some of the best roads I've ever driven on. And I, you know, having lived in California and Northern California, especially that uh, I have some pretty high standards for that because some of the amazing roads in California. Uh, and just so much fun, you yeah. know, so I get, yeah. you know, I live in the mountains, but I spend time there and I, I totally get it. You know, it's great. Yeah. It's fun driving up and down and yeah, for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Wow. So uh, yeah, so, so uh, some fun discussion there related to your favorite coaster, favorite coasters, <laughs> in plural. Um, what would you say is your least favorite coaster? Oh boy, oh, dude, that's so hard because it's like there's not there's never coasters out there that I'm like, well, that was horrible. I didn't have a good time because I sure. think just about every single one I'm like, all right, write it again. But <laughs> um, I yeah, I honestly sure. I can't say. Um, that I had a least favorite. Um, the one that I just, I, I guess you want to say, like, didn't enjoy as much was the, oh, crap. What was the coaster called? It's in a uh, movie theme park. Uh, it's the movie theme park in Bottrop, Germany. What is that? Uh-huh. Coaster? It's the one where Tom Hanks wrote it. It's like the first few seconds of one of his movies. It's whatever whatever that one was. It's it has some kind of like wild wild west it, theme or it's something. The, so. It's the wooden coaster, right? Yes, yes. That <laughs> ooh, I, okay. I, I'm I'm only 23 years old, but I got <laughs> off that going like I need a chiropractor. Like I was like, uh-huh. this is this is crazy. So we were like, hey, maybe we should retract that. And they're like, ah, uh-huh. we'll get around to it. <laughs> we're like, oh boy. yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, no, yeah yeah maybe some I mean, titan track considering they clearly can't yeah no i have been yeah. in movie car germany <laughs> i was there in october well, during one of my european trips last year and so prior to that visit my my answer to this question was the great american screen machine in georgia you know very old wooden coaster oh um <laughs> but my have a new answer bandit is that's the one you're talking about bandit is my new answer so yeah. quick Quick, funny story. Do you, are you an iPhone person or an Android person? I was an iPhone person. And then my dad goes, well, we only use Androids and Dell here. Oh. So I had to make the switch. So I feel okay. like an old right. woman trying to figure out a touch phone for the first time. <laughs> like, it is so crazy. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, uh, fair enough. So you're an Android person, but you probably have heard about like last year, um, like September when the new Apple Watches and iPhones came out, they have this like new crash detection thing you probably heard about yes. that right? yes so i i'm a big iphone apple watch so i gotten in september before the, right before this trip and got my new apple watch ultra got the new iphone so it has a crash detection mm-hmm. and it's happened on a few coasters now so it's, it's a little bit of a joke here but the first coaster it ever happened to me on where my watch is you know klaxons going off and it's telling me you know crash detected and all that is was bandit the two times i rode bandit yes i rode more than once that day and yeah, I mean, that is, I mean, awesome. that, yeah, it's, yeah, it, well, we can say it because it's a company that's no longer in existence, but it was made yeah. by a company, Roller Coaster Corporation of America, that made Son of Beast, which is notorious as well. I mean, they just not, did not make good coasters, unfortunately. And, you know, I mean, and that's one of the things I really pre- appreciate about GCI is you guys make, you know, some just, I, I can't really think of a GCI that I haven't liked. You know, mm-hmm. it's that that is on my least favorite or close to my least favorite coaster. I mean, you guys just make some awesome coasters, and even beyond when the ones you make, um, they're uh, for example, Go, um, Ghost Rider at Knotts is one of my favorites. Now that is a CCI that got a, a big GCI treatment retrack. Um, like you, you said you'd like to do to Bandit. Uh, what back in like 2016 or so, and when I wrote it after that, it was like night day. I'm like, wow, that that's Ghost Rider. And it's one of my favorites. And I call it a GCI because what you guys did to it changed it so much. It was a very extensive repair. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 So and some pro- reprofiling of it. And mm-hmm. so forth. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's one of the things you guys do great is one of these one of the lead modern wooden coaster companies is where you can have not just flat curves. You can have profile curves, you know, bank curves. It makes a huge difference. So, yeah. Well, that's actually a great segue. So we've talked a lot about you. <laughs> uh, and we certainly talked about GCI, but let's really dig into GCI. Uh, you have a few questions I'd like to ask you and kind of learn more about you guys. So, uh, first of all, you know, talk about the history of GCI, like how Claire started it and, you know, you guys, your experience designing and building coasters. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, um, to make a long story short, uh, my dad worked for CCI um, back in the day. He's been in the roller coasters business, business since he was about, oh my gosh, probably around my age, around 20, 19, 20 years old. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. So he's he's been doing all this for many, many years. And um, 
Let's see. He was working on, I think it's Hurricane up in Indiana Beach. Am I right about that? It's the wooden coaster. Oh, who's a, who's a hurricane? Who's a hurricane? Yep, there you go. Yeah. And yeah. he um, is a crazy story, actually. And we just found out uh, recently that that coaster is built on a Native American burial ground. So we're all kind of like wondering if it's cursed. But maybe people aren't superstitious oh. like that. So maybe I'm not relevant when I say that. But I, we, I'm superstitious. So that this speaks numbers to me. But um. Really? My dad, yeah, my dad went up there one day when he was working for um, CCI and uh, he actually fell through the coaster and he fell 55 feet and he broke oh just goodness. about every bone in his body. And um, the way they knew he was alive was he like twitched his thumb and they were like, oh my gosh, we need to get him to the hospital right now. And um, so he said, if I recover from this, him and him and my godfather, Michael Boodley were in some hotel, um, after he just got released from the hospital and there, he was saying, Michael, if I survive this and I pull through, I'm, I'm doing my own company. And it's so oh, cool because wow. my dad's only worked at other, you know, roller coaster companies. He didn't go to college or anything. And, um, you know, he just huh. built his company from the ground up. And, um, when I, and th this is such an exaggeration, but when I say my dad works 25, eight, I mean, 25, eight, <laughs> not 25, eight, like he, wow. this company is so important to him and it really shows it has shown to, uh, that he has shown that to me for, you know, all my whole life. But, um, it, it is, it's very inspiring because it's like, well, I, I have nothing to be like laid back for nothing to be lazy about. Cause I'm like, man, that guy, he he's, you know, half paralyzed and he gets to every job site need be, he will be up in the morning doing what he needs to do. And even though he's kind of the boss now, doesn't need to be out on the field or anything. He chooses to go to stand there with the guys because he knows so much about it that, you know, he's going to be there to help them, whether they have questions or they need help with uh, anything, anything on the table. Wow. So yeah, yeah. It's, he's a very inspiring person. <laughs> but wow. yeah that's how we got into it and then um not too many years later after um he they started up michael was the initial like engineer designer and everything and then we pulled in jeff pike and chris gray um oh, jeff yeah. pike uh he what a good guy they actually just um not too long ago a couple years ago uh started their own company skyline design so yes. we, we still they still design our coasters or anything it's the same people that were doing it before um it's just not in-house anymore but um i mean we have such a great relationship with them and uh, i remember jeff telling me that uh, before, like he worked down here at the office. I'm not sure if around that time we didn't have the office yet or what was going on, but he would work at our home computer. And my brother and I would like sit there and like throw balls at him. Cause we were like three years old. So we were like, oh, this is guy in our house. And we sit there and like throw toys at him. And he would just be like, Oh my gosh, like I'm trying to work here and these kids, but he's like, man, that was probably the best time working for you guys. He goes, if I could ever go back to that, I would. I was like, Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> I, I, love like, it. Well, I love I it. I didn't know I was like a terrible child. And <laughs> he was like, oh, <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> but um, it, wow. it was, it's cute. But yeah, so, um, but now they started their own company and they're, they're doing fantastic. They actually just started up um, their own spaghetti bowl coaster that yes. they're putting in like museums. Sp spaghetti and spaghetti bowl. Yes. And it, it is such a cool thing. Like I, I would have never even thought to do that. So it's just like a few cars or maybe one car and, you know, it's just a quick little ride, but um, yeah, I'm very, very, very proud of them. But yeah, I mean, it took uh wildcat was our first coaster and then it went to um, I think it's lightning racer next or prowler. It's one of those. They, they might. They oh might yeah. Be right. Yeah. And um, you know, from there on out, you know, my dad has just been kicking butt like, it, he's such a respectful man in the industry and not even just the industry, just in general. And um, so knowledgeable, you know, he's, he's great to work with. He's kind of old school when it comes to stuff, you know, he's the you know, <laughs> Pennsylvania boy, you know, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really cool to see him like go into action and, um, you know, put his like thinking cap on. And um, that's like the thing that happened with the Titan track, you know, like he sat himself in the office for weeks and was just like, what can I do to improve our stuff and, you know, continue, you know, having different products like our competitors and everything. So he right. 
came up with his own design of Titan track and it is, it's the coolest thing. I, I, I was like, dad, well, I didn't know you were this like <laughs> diverse in this stuff, but he's, I mean, he's, it, it is just really, really cool to see this, but yeah, he worked his butt off and now we're, what's the, uh, so it's probably in like a year or so we're going to be 30 years, um, you know, running. So it's really awesome. Wow. That, yeah, no, 30 years. Okay. That's one of my questions. Well, wow, that is, well, first of all, that was quite a story. So, I mean, I don't know if we'll ever get to talk to Claire here on the podcast. <laughs> but if we did, I hope you will. I hope you will. Yeah, yeah, that would, that might be nice to do. Cause I, I, I have talked to your dad before actually quick aside. So when Christian and Morgan, uh, the same day at IAPA last year, when they introduced me to you uh, before that, I mean, I was just kind of hanging out with them and going around and, and uh, having a good time. And we, you know, at one point we all sat down with your dad and, and they were, they were talking to him again. And I, you know, I know you guys are all friends, but also, you know, yeah, the, you know, you guys were a client of theirs. So I just kind of kept my mouth shut, just kind of hung out and listened. And, you know, just, I was, you know, I didn't know, know much about your dad, but, you know, I was kind of listening to him talk to Christian and Morgan and like, okay, this guy, he's been around. I can tell, you know, he's, he knows his stuff and been around a while and seemed pretty interesting, very, very, you know, very dynamic, you know, like yourself, you know, I could I tell from meeting you, but yeah, so that was kind of interesting, but um, I did not know that story about him with the Hoosier hurricane. I mean, if his, again, if we ever have him on the podcast, you'll probably will. I know his answer probably will be his craziest moment on a coaster. He wasn't riding it, yeah. but technically he was on a coaster, literally yeah. on the track and he felt, wow, that, wow, that's, so, so I, 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 well, I mean, you know, Oh, again, hopefully we get to interview him, but I'll just go ahead and ask you real quick. Did he did he not have like he was not strapped in or and that's and that's the thing. Safety is key. And he is all about safety now. That's why our coasters are okay. like very smooth, very like we right. check everything. We're very cautious of our guys doing anything. And I get it. You yeah. know, sometimes it's like, hey, I just need to check this really quick. I'm just gonna run up there and look. And well, that's what my dad did too. And immediately fell right through so um it takes one second for something to happen so you know don't ever second guess anything you know get be, put the harness on even if it takes 10 minutes to put on and take right. off like just do it because you don't want to end up like that because i mean he got lucky he went he's half paralyzed and started a company and now he's successful some other people might not have that same luck so i'm just i always oh, try yeah. to stress to the guys out in the field listen like i understand it's just you want to quickly walk up there and check something out but don't like you need to be strapped in because we're just not going to have that again like we that was uh my, my dad you know it's so interesting to see him, you know, walk, walk on these coasters. Like if we're, if we're going to check a coaster and like, if they need a repair done or the, anything like that, you know, he's, he's walking on this, like hands in his pocket. Like he don't care. Like it, it's like the, <laughs> the accident never happened. And I'm like, right. I would be terrified to ever yeah. walk on these again. And he's just like, doesn't even mind it. It's second nature to him. I'm like, man, he, he, he's so cool. <laughs> he's so cool. Yeah. That's really cool. I mean, obviously because people, yeah, people get PTSD from, from traumatic events like that where, exactly. you know, like, like David, you know, our founder, he, mm -hmm. he tells a lot of our guests a big story that happened in his life where he and his parents, they were in a, a very, very bad car accident a number of years ago, like 10 years ago. And his oh, wow. mom still has the effects of it. She doesn't like driving. She basically doesn't really drive much at all. She's afraid of driving. She'll go in a car, you know, she'll go in a car with David or his dad, but she won't drive. She doesn't want to be responsible for, you know, given what happened to her, you know, and, and it wasn't even their fault, but, you know, but she's just afraid of being in control of a vehicle, given what happened to her. And, uh, you know, it's that PTSD. So the fact that your dad didn't, didn't have that, or just certainly doesn't have that now, but, you know, the other thing I think is quite something, and I want to point this out, Olivia, is um, I, I pride myself in having a positive attitude. You know, that doesn't mean I, you know, every day is sunshine and rainbows, yeah. but a lot of my life, uh, and I wasn't always this way. I've been through depression, anxiety in my life, and I've been through some really dark times, but coming out and seeing the light coming out to the light, I've gotten stronger and stronger going through those events. And um, especially since my most recent depression, which was about eight years ago, um, I've been, you know, really strong. The theme park therapy has been a part of that. But again, I just, I, I really, since then, especially had a very predominantly positive attitude. And one of the things that I credit for that positive attitude is something I've learned a skill, if you will. 
And that is to be able to find the positive in any situation. And I can use your dad's story as an example. So tragic what happened. Thankfully, he didn't lose his life. He was very lucky, as you pointed out. But because of that traumatic event, he, you know, probably thankful to be still be alive and that epiphany coming to him, I'm going to start my own company. For all we know, you and I may not be talking today and we, he would still be at CCI and CCI would still exist and be the exactly. kind of Franken universe, you know, kind of thing, like a bizarre universe, I should say, you know, where, you know, maybe CCI would have gotten better because, you know, they weren't the best yeah. um, <laughs> compared to where things are today with you guys and others. But, but, you know, maybe we wouldn't have as good a wooden coasters as we have today if that tragedy hadn't happened to him. So, you know, yeah, so the world works in mysterious ways. But, yeah, no, thanks for sharing that yeah, kind of brief history there. And, wow, that's that's a crazy story. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it is really cool. I love telling people about it because I just love seeing everyone's face like, what? Like, yeah. <laughs> he did what now? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew something, I, some things about GCI, but I didn't know that. You know, we learn something mm-hmm. new every day, which I, that's one yeah. of the things I love. So, all right. Well, okay. So we kind of talked about this earlier, but you're, you know, you're not just an employee of GCI. You're part of the Hain family. You know, obviously Claire, your dad and your brother. What's your brother's name, by the way? Hayden. Hayden. Yes. Yeah. So I think I briefly mentioned it. I met him at, uh, at IAPA last year, but mm-hmm. okay. So is it just the three of you or any other family members work at? Uh... Yes. So my cousin, um, which is my dad's nephew, um, is coming on board and he'll be one of the uh, learning to be a project manager kind of thing. Like I said, we're all but because of how small our company is and how many employees we have, we try to all share each other's jobs. But it's very important because, you know, it's good to know what the other person's doing and what they're talking about. Right. Um, it's not sure, good to have so many different departments. And then, you know, one department goes to talk to another one. They're like, hey, man, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. Like, I don't know that stuff. It's good to have everyone that's pretty diverse in all the different um, skills and knowledge that, you know, retain in this company. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have worked for, like I said, I, you know, I work for a family run company, but I've worked for two of them in my life, actually. Uh, and I've worked for large companies, but I've worked for you know, a lot of smaller companies. And the often as the smaller the company, the more hats you wear. So I totally get that. I've, I've done that before. So I, I can relate. OK, so there's there's three now, now about about to be four family members that that are working <laughs> at GCI. So, you know, can you talk about how perhaps kind of way to frame this? You know, how the fact that you guys are, you know, so many family members there and it's a small company, like you said, how that factors in, how that makes things different than, say, maybe other companies you've worked for. Hmm. Well, I mean, (laughs) you know, it's uh, it's funny because, like, you know, if you get mad at each other, you're yelling at each other because someone didn't do something right. You can just be like, all right, well, come over my house at the end of the day. Let's hang out. Like, we're fine. Like, it's, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to, yeah. like, hold that grudge. It's not like you don't know them or anything. You're like, okay, sorry I yelled. Like, just just come over later. Like, we'll hang out. We'll, we'll vibe. And <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because it's, it's just like my brother and I, you know, if, like, he's, if I'm saying something to him and he's just not getting it, we got a little argument. I'm just like, all right, well, let me know what mom's making for dinner tonight and I'll, I'll see you then. And like, it's not, like a, it's not like ever, ever an issue, but um, it is interesting. It does make things, you know, a little, it makes it easier in the ways of communicating towards each other um, because we know each other so well. And, you know, we could say terrible things to each other and we still know like at the end of the day, all right, we love each other. Like we're family, whatever. Right. And, yeah. um, but like it does, it does make it difficult in the fact of like, I mean, even though, yes, you can say whatever you want to each other, the communication is better at the same time. It's not really because you almost like you're like, OK, like I don't want like our family relationship, our bond to um like get destroyed by what what's going on here at work. Right. So sure. it does it does have that like concerned feeling where I'm like, okay, like I don't want to do something or I don't, I know none of them want to do something so messed up here that it causes so much stress. And then it brings it back home. And then that causes problems between the family bond. Right. So, but I mean, for, for Bryson, that's my cousin coming in and Hayden and I we're so close and everything that I just feel like no matter what, it would always be talked out. Like there's never going to be a, where we bring our problems home and then it's going to, 
cause problems in our family ties or anything like that. But um, I know that is a huge worry with a lot of family owned businesses. You know, a lot of, yeah. I know a lot of businesses that have mostly family members or we're all family members. And then after years, all of a sudden those families don't even talk anymore. So it's yeah. like, I don't, yeah. I never want that to happen. So um, sure. we, we have us three have talked about like, what can we do in the future to prevent that happening? Cause none of us want to like, hate each other so right, um right. but but other than that I mean it is it's awesome you know you get to work with your family every day and like I love my cousin so like I love hanging out with him and I love my brother he's like my best friend so he you know <laughs> it's it's just cool you get to go work every day and um you know see your favorite people so you know I can't it, you can't beat it truly can't yeah no that's great that's fantastic you know and maybe the fact you know your concerns about you know damaging relationships Maybe, and you know, like you said, it sounds like all of you kind of have that concern. That can be good for you in that you can be, you know, you know, like, let me put it this way. So like people that work in a company in general, they can have run-ins with coworkers and not get along with coworkers and, you know, uh-huh. problems, you know, but because you guys don't want to damage your relationships, maybe that means you kind of are more careful about your jobs and, and just respect each other more carefully so that you don't go down that road. And so you kind of Absolutely. have that good working relationship because of it you know so maybe that's kind of awesome from that. so interesting well thanks for sharing a little bit about what it's like to be in that family business uh so you know gci and we've talked about this talked about some some of your great coasters and you know, literally you know your company great coaster national it's in the name but some of your you know awesome and great coasters you know they've been instrumental your company's been instrumental in improving the quality of wooden coasters over the past you know especially over the past 10, 20 years, I know you guys have been around for 30, but you know, you got your start and you kind of had to, you know, figure things out. And, and, you know, as you've gone by, just like, as we go through life, the older we are generally, the wiser we are. So you guys okay. keep getting better, better. And, you know, part of that, you know, with how you're making coasters better, I talked about this earlier is, you know, with track profiling and banking of curves and things like that and, and technology factors into, um, can you talk about anything beyond those generalities is there anything that you can kind of point at which has enabled gci to offer such a better ride experience on a wooden coaster Mm -hmm. well you do have to thank the younger generation coming up the new engineers and everything designing new coasters and thinking of new ways to do things um that has definitely improved and not just gci but many other roller coaster and other amusement park companies right um I mean, we are, we are very against unscheduled maintenance. So we, we like to have a plan and we like to have it set and something goes off it. We're having a meeting. We're figuring out why that happened. Like, why are we keeping up with things? And, um, you know, we've definitely visited parks, right. That we're like, Hey, uh, looks like you haven't even walked the ride in about a year. And they're like, Oh my God, we haven't done that. Like in so long. And we're like, important keynote. We're going to write up top here in red, walk the ride, check it out every day. Like there's, you can't, you can't mess that up, but, um, right. but we're, we're very adamant because like I mentioned before about my dad's accident, like we're very keen on safety. You know, the last sure. thing we would want is for anybody, whether it be the maintenance people or, you know, riders or any, anybody riding that ride to get any kind of injury. So um, we're definitely very adamant on maintenance and that it being scheduled um and we're always sure. looking for new solutions right so like my dad's titan track you know he sat with the engineers for two three weeks and was like we're figuring this out right now because i'm not going to deal with my competitors beating me every single time like i want to have at least my foot in the door and i can say all right at least i have something in there that can compare to to, to compare to what the job what they're wanting right so right so I thought I just thought that was so interesting by him because he I was talking to him about these questions and I was like, what do you have to say about this? Because uh, like 11, 12 and 13, oh, okay. I was like, you yeah. you kind of have more of the idea about that. But this is right. kind of going off of what he says. So <laughs> but oh, no, that's he, fine. That's fine. My yeah. dad is 
my dad is very, um, very loyal and faithful when it comes to his work. And, you know, he would never walk away from any job. I know that for a fact. I've heard that for years. I've known that from people. And, you know, this is what he tells me all the time. I'll never walk away. I'll, you know, make sure that even, even if I'm screwed over in the end, I'll take it because I just want that coaster to be smooth, redone, and anything that was wrong with it, we're going to fix it. So we don't have to, no injuries will be caused or, you know, not even just injuries but people riding in they're like well it feels like nothing's been done to it or what is even like what's new about this and so he never he never wants to hear those words he wants to make sure that he's always made an impression on the customers that's great that's great and you know in, in kind of you're answering that question me kind of you know I was thinking about what your what my, my uh guests and everything are saying and what came to my mind there as you're going through that is something kind of profound so you know, obviously being an enthusiast, I spent a lot of time at parks. I've been to many parks and, you know, steel coasters, even, you know, some of the newest ones, they have downtime all the time. You know, they go down, et cetera. And I get it that wooden coasters, like you said, unscheduled maintenance, you know, downtime. But the reality is, and, you know, this is true for, especially for your coasters, I mean, not lightning rod, but, you know, we talked about earlier, but lightning rod is unique <laughs> in that it has an aspect to it that's very much a steel coaster type feature mm -hmm. a launch um, and that's what causes the issues for lightning rod predominantly but but aside from that you know your your coasters and you know other wood manufacturers um in general it's very rare that the, those coasters are down it's it's like or go down during the day they're they're a lot more reliable than steel coasters and i guess part of it is is that to have a decently running wooden coaster there's a lot of maintenance and upkeep and walking the track every day uh -huh. you know the safety requirements in each state for for those things so you know a lot there there a lot more attention is paid to them um and i guess there's also a simplicity a beautiful like you said artistic simplicity to wooden coasters they don't you know they don't i guess and they have all the sensors that steel coasters have and all the technology that can fail and and uh -huh. you know, aligned and and whatnot so i never thought about that before but but and again i appreciate certainly as a writer and an enthusiast that you guys are so focused on safety and you know if that is another aspect that came out of claire you know having that insane accident where he faced nearly faced death uh and then you know and didn't and then you know i had that epiphany you know where we want to start his own company and focus on safety as part of that you know that's fantastic and you know and it's great that you know, um, I'll use a car analogy. So nothing against people that like Volvo. I'm not a Volvo fan, uh, but Volvo is known to have, you know, some of the safest cars in the world. Historically, they've, no they've been known for that. And part of how I've looked at it is, okay, well, they're known for safety. That's their focus. Yeah. They don't focus necessarily on like flashy or sporty cars or, you know, and fastest cars, things like that. The exciting mm -hmm. things that happen. Like. Well, what's cool is that, you know, GCI, you guys focus a lot on safety because look what happened with your dad. But you guys have awesome coasters, too. They're fun. They're not just, like, boring, safe coasters, you know? Yes. Yeah. You guys are the best of both worlds, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's, and that's, that is definitely something, you know, that we focus on, definitely. You know, you said about my dad's accident and all that. And, and not only that, you know, no one wants to wake up one day and hear that, you know, you killed the whole train ride because of something going wrong like no no one wants to hear that so <laughs> so we're, we're very adamant on that as as every company should be but we're definitely we're definitely keep that as like our number one priority oh for sure for sure so you know, we've been talking about titan track that's come up a couple times here and um i have a little bit of a more personal connection with titan track only in a couple of things here so first of all, um, you know, I know that you guys have an awesome partnership. Well, okay, let me let me take a quick step back. I want to be a little more dramatic here in, in my presentation. I just remembered something. So um, as we're recording this podcast, uh, it you probably have heard this yourself, that um, like the, a couple days ago, it kind of this leak came out about uh, not Fun Spot Orlando, but Fun Spot Kissimmee. Uh, their wooden coaster, which is not a GCI, it's another company's. Uh, it's it's um, had some challenges with maintenance and staying smooth. And it, it's not it's riding pretty rough, and mm -hmm. I can say that from personal experience. And so there are rumors that it is getting a similar thing to Titan Track from another company. Say that much, and some other people have some friends of mine have said to me. 
oh, I wonder if that would ever happen to white lightning. That'd be crazy to have that happen there too. And, like, <laughs> and I told them, I said, you guys don't get the close relationship that GCI has with, with fun spot, with the Ari, with the Ari family. I mean, you know, it's like, I point this out when I go to fun spot Orlando, which is my favorite fun spot park, by the way. Um, I just think it's like the most, it's the best put together park. It's gets well-rounded. And I, I like, Absolutely. I, like, I like the coasters there. I mean, I think freedom flyer, it's one of the first modern Vacoma family coasters where it's not a hang and bang, you know, it's got a great yeah. ride to it. You know, and that's a great ride. And of course, a white lightning. I love white lightning is like my favorite, like smaller Woody, like, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's not a kitty. It's not, you know, you know, something like that, but it's just a great smaller Woody. But anyway, um, what I point out to friends when, when we go to that park is like, you guys notice, you see that great coaster, great coasters international, that GCI logo right there, like huge. You don't see that anywhere. Parks, parks hide the manufacturer, but again, you guys have that great partnership. And to that end, and what I'm leading to here is you guys tested Titan track for the first time on white lightning. What was it back yeah. in like 2020? I think it was right. 20, yeah, 20, 2019, 2020, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So the one of the personal connections I have to this is, you know, I know Christian and Morgan helped kind of film the the testing of it. And uh and the first like I think one of the very first test riders was my buddy Kalen, who Christian and you know Morgan filmed on, on the coaster there. And I remember talking to him, he lives in Tampa, talking to him afterwards, he, hey, what do you think of the Titan tracks? Like, oh yeah, it's really smooth. You can barely tell the difference with the wood. And like, okay, that's cool. And then I got to ride it you know, later that year for the first time, I'd never ridden, ridden my lightning. And I was like, wow, I, I can't even tell where the, where the Titan track is, yeah. you know? And, and then um, I have, so I was one of the, one of the first, not the first, you know, I, pretty much Kayla was one of the, first, the very first, but um, to, to ride the Titan track. And then I was over in Europe, like I told you. And in mm-hmm. December, I went to Efteling, a park I hadn't been to in a long time. And I literally wrote uh, Joris on Dundrak, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I don't speak yes. Dutch. Yes, that's okay. Um, <laughs> Joris, people call it Joris. Um, uh, right after it reopened, after it getting its Titan track rework. And, uh, I, you know, I found it was, you know, very, you know, barely could tell the Titan track section from the wooden section. I, I tell maybe a slight difference, but very slight. Like yeah. GP said, it's not, not, not a problem, but just, it's, it's almost, you know, it's, it's almost just like the wood, which is the point yeah. and nothing against RMC. Um, I do like RMCs, but I don't like the idea that just convert all wooden coasters to RMCs or hybrids, you know, and that's why I love that you guys have your Titan track and RMC has their kind of similar thing. Now I, I like that both of you guys have that because both companies uh, have great kind of classic wooden coasters. Some of the earlier RMCs, you know, like Outlaw Run's a great coaster, is a is I would consider it a traditional wooden coaster. The topper track and all that rides like a wooden coaster, and uh-huh. I love. You know, there's nothing that rides like a real wooden coaster like that. And I love the idea of things like Titan Track, where you can still have that type of coaster and a beautiful coaster as well. That art that, that you talked about, but a great riding coaster. Because it's not, the steel coasters don't, they're not the same. They're just not the same. So um, my, again, my hat tips to 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 Claire for coming up with Titan Track. Yeah. So I'm curious, you know, I know you guys are putting Titan Track on more and more coasters. Um, I think you're using some Titan Track with uh, with ZMBZ Zinger, right? Some parts uh-huh. of it. And you, I know you guys have some other projects where you're doing some refurbs on older, older, co- older wooden coasters. I think even some of yours that putting Titan Track in. Um, so you know, beyond kind of where you're at now with Titan Track, what do you see? It, where do you see it going? And what do you guys see using the technology for in say five to ten years? Right. Um, well, right now, as we are um, only using it just to repair like hard hit spots. Um, Anywhere that they're like, listen, we have to do maintenance on this section like every year and it costs us hundreds of thousands of dollars and, you know, we're tired of doing it. So we're like, okay, let's put it in here. And if you really like it, we can track more. But I think what what you were saying earlier is, you know, we don't really want to get rid of the whole like wooden uh, coaster experience taken away from people. It's just where where they're seeing a lot of problems. But we are having parks now come to us being like, listen, 
I think I want a whole Titan track coaster. And we're like so excited by that. Like it's super cool. So I, I do see um, that happening in the future where we might have to do a couple coasters where it's um, wooden structure or steel structure with the Titan track. But um, of course we always push our wooden coasters. That's what we're best known for. That's right, our specialty. Right. So, um, and we don't, it's not like we are not excited about the Titan track or anything. We don't want to pursue it and push for it, but um, it's definitely just that nostalgic feeling of riding a wooden coaster. So we always, you know, when I keep in mind to, uh, either whatever park we're working with, like, Hey, listen, like maybe try to bring in some wooden segments into it, the, to the design, because, you know, that's, that's the whole point of it. It's having that nostalgic feel running that coaster. But, um, in the, you know, in the next five to 10 years, I definitely see more, hybrid coasters with gci just something like rmc does that you're saying like the the whole right. like track with the wooden structure or something but um it, like yeah like that could be the future but we're we're just hoping that it will be as popular as it is now if not more but we still hope to keep the wooden coasters because that's well, you know, that's what we're known for. And unfortunately that they're not, um, you know, they're not as popular anymore, especially in a lot of parks, you know, like we said earlier, people yeah. will usually go to the steel coaster. Um, when I was in India, people didn't even know wooden coasters were a thing. They were like, is that something? <laughs> and I'm like, that's not new. It's actually the original. So I was like, yeah, oh. yeah. So, <laughs> but it, it's, it's interesting when you hear stuff like that. So you're just like, wow. It's like to some people, this could be like this, this crazy brand new ride. Like they have no um, understanding that this is like very sentimental and nostalgic to other people in the world. So, but yeah, I mean, to, to go back on the Titan track. Yeah, we do. We do see it, you know, pursuing in the future. We do see more parks wanting it, um, whether it be for the maintenance reasons not you know hitting at those hard segment areas or you know doing a full hybrid coaster right right interesting interesting yeah so i mean you know with rmc with their hybrid technology their iron horse or ibox track it doesn't feel like a wooden coaster it feels more it really is a steel coaster that has a wooden supports and all that now with titan you know like the experiences the couple of coasters that i've ridden with titan track the whole coaster, like I was saying earlier, you can't tell the difference. So it feels like a wooden coaster. So I'm mm -hmm. wondering if, you know, like, if you guys were like those parks that are asking for it, if you were to build a whole coaster out of Titan track, would it still kind of feel like that? Would it give that wooden coaster ride still? See, it, I guess it depends to what trains you use, right? So like right. our new Infinity right. Flyer trains have a different design at the bottom that kind of form with the Titan track. So you can do like the inversions, the crazy barrel rolls, and like, it's a smoother process, you know, making that turn. Because um, if you look at like PTC trains, you put them on there, they're going to go Ch -ch 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 -ch, right. and, like, going around. So it is just kind of depending on what trains you have on there. But um, I, I don't see it. I don't see Titan track, even with the infinity flyers, completely revamping the ride, making it more of a steel ride. I think it's still going to be that, wooden feel um it's still gonna right. shake a little bit it's gonna whip you around and all that but it's not gonna be um as chaotic as a wooden coaster in my opinion from um, what from what i've it. wrote it's not gonna be as chaotic but that's why right. i kind of always say to parks like you know don't forget about the wooden parts because that's really what people love they want to be whipped around and have their hair fly all over you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I, I like I said, I started off, and I've said it other times here in our discussion. I love wooden coasters, and there is nothing quite like that experience. Yeah, you know, there's no no steel coaster or you know hybrid, you know that really does it. The only thing I've seen that's maybe like that is again the couple of coasters of yours that I've ridden with some Titan Trek on it. It's and again, like you said, the trains and that makes a lot of sense. Like with PTC or I guess you know maybe Timberline or things like that, where you get that kind of you know you know shift mm -hmm. the wiggle the shaking and and that stuff you know it's great with wooden coasters as long as the air time and, and things like that so i'm yeah i'm glad, I'm glad to see you guys are still focused on that type of experience whether it be with wood and maybe some time track as well but that's that's great that's exciting so you mentioned the barrel rolls and inversions so as i mentioned you know i met you at iapa last year i've been going iapa now um, consistently since 2019, of course, 2020 does not count because there was no yeah. app. Right. But, um, and pretty much since, since that time, uh, you guys have had something in that same time period as well. Since 2019, 
And I I gawk at it every time, every year by half I stop by your booth. And you have this, this stunning model of this dueling wooden coaster with inversions. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my my ultimate question here for you in terms of the GCI portion of the interview, we'll finish up with some more, a couple more general questions. But this last GCI related question I have for you is, is that is that coaster ever going to be built or anything like it? Or what, what are we talking about? <laughs> so um, we did we did uh, propose that to a park um, over in China and they were all about it. It was so cool. They were like, we have so much money to throw on this ride. We're going to do it up. It's going to be the biggest, like biggest um, dueling wooden coaster. And we were so excited for it. Then COVID hit. And then... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then as you know, like all all parks and companies, you know, you lost people, you lost the money, you lost time for it. And then it, it was so and being that it was in China too, it was, you know, their their um how their government handled COVID was way different than us. So it was yeah. like yeah. we're trying to, you know, get something going and they're like, Well, we can't yet, like our borders aren't even open for people to come in, let alone any um materials to come in. So um, as as the years, the two years went on, it just kind of fell through and didn't happen, unfortunately. But we bring it every year just in case we get lucky that there's one person like, I want that. Let's go have a meeting right now. We're going to get that. We want that coaster. But um, it it's definitely um, it's. It's so cool to look at it. I, we, we pray, we pray that someone would be like, okay, we want that coaster, but unfortunately no one yet. Um, we've noticed that a lot of parks do want the steel coaster. So we try our hardest to pursue that wooden coaster because I mean, you've seen the model. It's really cool. We all yeah. want it. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. yeah, this is an audio podcast. So, you know, we can't, you know, it's not like a YouTube thing here where you're going to can show you you know, yeah. uh, for our audience, what we're talking about, but I encourage our audience to look up. I think I'm sure you can find it by looking up, you know, IAPA, GCI, dueling wooden coaster, you know, I'm sure you'll probably be able to find images of it or for listeners. If, if, um, if you're like, if you're really curious and don't know what I'm talking about, feel free to reach out to me, you know, coaster surf on Instagram and I'll make sure to, if I can't find a photo, I can get one from Olivia uh, and and yeah. get that over to you. Or when at the very end here, Olivia will be sharing a GCI social media. I know she could probably help you out with that too. But um, you know, it, it's it's stunning though. Suffice to say, uh, it's yeah, as Olivia has just mentioned as well. And uh, well, let me ask you this. And you know, obviously, I'm not going to ask you the price of it because that's not you know. That's not <laughs> to you. But it makes sense because it's large and it's dueling and it, you know mm -hmm. it, you know it would be expensive. But um, while no one has has bit the bait there. Uh, have you had people at least discuss it with you? Is there interest from buyers? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Um, even even just like like a like a little bit smaller version of it, but I mean, yeah. we have discussed like the the actual like size of it and everything as well. And um, uh, so many parks love it; they want it. It's just the cost of it. They're like, yeah. oh man, <laughs> we we would be out of business before we built half of it. So. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they're like, yeah, it. they're like, I don't know about that, but we we really we we bring it back over here because we pray that you know somebody somewhere is going to look at it and be like, I'm going to figure out how to get that in my own park. So that's why we bring yeah. it. And <laughs> but it is cool. It is really cool. But yeah, I definitely will get you a picture of that. Um, if it it is, I don't think now because when I looked up GCI before on IAP, I don't think I've ever seen that on there. But I could be wrong. It, it could be on there okay. now. And I just, it looked in, in yeah. a while but um yeah not, I, I, I don't only send you a picture yeah i mean i might have taken a photo of it myself but yeah okay. if you could send me one that way i'll save it in my camera roll and that way i'll have like a a good official like a good picture of it that, that yeah absolutely for absolutely. sure and and um you know and i don't i'm not expecting a commission on this if the sale happens i'll just be thrilled <laughs> to ride it the i mean i've been over to china and i've been to some parks there but but the one park in the u.s uh, now, money aside, mind you, um, <laughs> that I think that coaster deserves to be built at. And I don't know about the space. I mean, there is some space there and they have a defunct ride right back where I could see it going. But um, it should be taken out, obviously, because it's defunct. I think that coaster, it it's deserving of Holiday World, of being like the GCI at Holiday World. Because that is the wooden coaster park of all parks. Yeah. And 
how epic would that be? I mean, that would be so, so deserving for, for that mm-hmm. park and for that coaster for you guys. But again, the Cook family, who, again, another family run business, um, mm-hmm. you know, again, don't know what the cost is. Don't, you know, not going to be, not going to know, but I can imagine it's probably above their budget. But on the other hand, they've been doing pretty well with post COVID and they've not been in, by, installing anything. So maybe, maybe they're saving up their pennies. You know, you never know. But man, that would be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That could be, be so awesome. Epic. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. So yeah, no, thanks for, thanks for sharing about that. Cause I've just been curious and I do hope whether it be holiday world or, you know, anywhere else, even if it's over in China or in the middle East or, you know, maybe you could go into that uh, uh, six flags at Kidia, you know, that crazy park in Saudi Arabia where there's like no budget. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Spend, <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe it goes there or something. I don't know, but you know, wherever it may be, I just hope it gets built and I hope you guys have success with it. But us too. Thank you. Thank um, you. Yeah, of course. Of course. Well, you know, thanks for talking about GCI. I'm just going to wrap things up here. A couple of last questions. So okay. these are going back to you personally here. Um, so um, this this question we've at, added this year, you know, we've talked a little bit about, about mortality here in our discussion today with what almost happened to your dad. Um, and um, and again, being being his daughter, you know, I mean, how old were you, by the way, when this happened? Were you born yet? Nope. Was this was this was even before my parents were married. So oh, right. Because 30 years ago. ago plus. Right. Yep. Right. Right. OK. So you yep. weren't born yet. But OK. But I mean, you know, even knowing that story, it's like it it brings mortality to your mind. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So so we unfortunately here in Coast Challenge, we had one of our earliest fans and supporters uh, going back to long, long before the podcast or days as a YouTube channel um, is a, uh, a, a kid in um, um, Southern California. Uh, where David lives, and David's met him several times, his mom, his dad, uh, and he uh, turned, uh, what was it, 16 last year. At the end of last year, he sadly passed away tragically, suddenly, um, and very unfortunate, oh and uh, especially affected David, because he would, he, I had never met um, uh, this guy, his name was Dusty, um, never met him, but David has, I was friends with him, was friends with his parents, and it hit David hard, and David wanted us you know, thinking about mortality to ask, add this question here uh, for season three. And as far as I'm concerned, it's here to stay beyond season three. So that's the framing of this question for you. And, you know, we, I would like to ask you is, you know, how we'd like your family and of course family, very big thing, you know, working with your family as well as being in your family, but how would you like your family, your friends, your colleagues, some of those big family members, uh, to remember you by like what would you like them to remember you as Olivia was this or Olivia did this um well and this is, and this has always been um something I've I've always thought about this question you know even I'm, I'm young but you know like we always said things can always happen so what 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 can you make the impact of um and when you leave this world like what are people going to think of you like were you were you terrible were you not nothing so um I always say like, I, I, I want to be remembered as someone that was always just loving, always loving and there for people, very positive because you know what, no matter what, at the end of the day, whether you were rich, you were poor, you were a hard worker, you were lazy, you know, it's, it's the person inside is, is who, what really matters. And that's what people are going to latch onto first, you know? Um, so I always, you know, I'm always, I, it, it never, it, it doesn't take anything out of me and it shouldn't for any other person, but, um, always be nice. And if you need to, and if you can be extra nice, like there's nothing, there's nothing holding you back. There's no gun to your head to tell you to do that. But it's like, you know, why, why not be, you know, take that extra step and make someone's day, even if it's just you smiling at them. And it's like, you know, I never, I never try to miss those opportunities to kind of make a stance into even strangers life. Like, Hey, like, you know, I was having a really bad day, but that, that girl was really, really nice to me. And it, it, cause that when I'm having a bad day and someone that, you know, just takes that extra little step to be extra nice to me and, or just show me like, Hey, like have a great day or smile me and nothing, anything like that. It's just, you know, that, that speaks numbers to me. And you know, going, you know, I went through a really hard time for some time in my life. And um, I just remember I had this one teacher that, you know, every day after school would like pull me in and I love to do like debate and everything. I love reading poetry and he would sit there and listen to me and like critique me. But he was always just, it was just almost very, I don't even know how to explain it, but it was just so calming. And it, I was just mm-hmm. like, wow, like, um, you know, I tell my teacher, I'm like, dude, you doing this? Like, completely changes my life because I, I can go home and just be 
sad and I'll soak in my bed and like, you know, be, coming here and like knowing that you're taking your own personal time out after school to sit here and work with me and like, just talk to me and treat me like a human. Like, so ever since then, I've always just been like very insistent that, you know, being the best and nice person always. That's great. I mean, that, I mean, that's fantastic. You couldn't really ask for much more. And granted, I don't know you that well. I've met you once briefly and then here talking today for an hour or two. But, you know, what I've really observed of you is, again, kindred spirit in terms of, you know, having a tremendous positive attitude and just uh, having a zest for life. In fact, yeah. you know, again, don't know you well, but uh, <laughs> I would maybe add on to what you said, just from what I've observed of you, of again, it, it, you know, you were you know, a nice person and caring person and you had a zest for life. You had a passion for life. Yeah, I think I would add that on. But yeah, no, thank I, you. I would, thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> my, my pleasure. So you've actually already shared some good advice in earlier answers to a couple of the questions, but um, beyond what you've already shared, is there any last bit of advice you'd like to share in the guise of what we're about, you know, theme park therapy and so forth? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think when I got into this um, industry, I was really nervous because I didn't know much about let alone engineering of the engineering aspect of coasters, but coasters in general, I just knew like you had fun on them and you wanted to continue riding them. So I would always be so nervous going to these sales meetings or whatever we're doing. And um, I think what, you know, you ever hear the thing is like fake it till you make it like, you know, but <laughs> it's, 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 you know, you don't need to fake something as long as you actually genuinely enjoy what you're doing, right? Even if you don't know it, as long as you're enjoying what's being said to you, you'll learn to understand it and you'll want to understand it. So all that comes from is confidence. When you have confidence, and I, and I can say this for any situation I've ever had in my life, when I didn't have the confidence, I was not doing good. I knew I was screwing up. Something was going wrong. If you have confidence, you will ask the questions so you won't have as many screw ups. And if you do, you have more confidence to go ask them again, like, hey, like I didn't do this right. What can I do better next time? So, um, you know, you know, the famous Mr. Jim Shea from Pyramid Ride. So we were, we were in Saudi Arabia and he came up to me and he was like, Olivia, you know, I just have to say you just look and and talk so confidently and and to me i was like that was the best compliment i've ever got in my life because inside i was wow. like i'm yeah. freaking out like i don't know anybody <laughs> here and like am i gonna say something stupid and like him just saying that made me go oh yeah like just be confident because as soon as you feel that confidence inside you you're unstoppable you can break down any wall and that and that is the honest yeah. god truth thing um even when i was saying before about skiing like I was, I was scared. Oh, out of my mind. I, I thought this, there is no way I'm going to survive when I get to, to the bottom of the hill, but just that initial, like, okay, girl, you got this, like, you got to do this. And, and if you don't, then you just, you give up and you never do again, but giving up and never doing again, doesn't play well with me. Like I have to <laughs> continue it. So, <laughs> but nice. if, if there's just, what I tell people all the time, like, how, how did you do this? How did you get into this? having confidence, have confidence in yourself? And if you can't just automatically bring that on, go start to do things and you see that you're really good at. And then eventually your confidence will build up inside you. That's great. And, and what you just shared at the very end there is very much akin to what I said earlier about facing fear by facing fear again and again and again, we get more courageous and be able to be more courageous in general in life. Same thing, like you said, if you if you have confidence issues in a certain area, focus on things that you, you are good at and, and really resonate with you where you are confident and do those things and build that confidence up and you'll find you're probably going to be more confident in those other areas than you were before. So that's a really good point. I totally agree with that. That's great. And, and you know, like David told you before we start recording, once again, um, uh, this advice I don't think has been shared before. Um, that's very unique advice. And again, I love that we get such unique, uh, you know, sets of advice, points of advice for, for each guest for this question. So thank you for, uh, for bringing through with that once again. So, uh, so Olivia, kind of wrapping things up here, um, you know, I would love for you to share, and, and this can be, because we you know we've talked to you today as a person, as well as representing GCI. So you can share if you like, you know, obviously some people want to be more out there than others, 
Um, if you'd like to share any kind of personal social media or website or blog yeah. or that you have, as well as, of course, anything official for GCI. And this could be, again, website, social media, YouTube, whatever it may be, feel free to share right now. Absolutely. So um, we do have our own Instagram. It is just Great Coasters International, all one word, all lowercase. Um, it has our logo as the uh, profile picture. Please go follow us on there. Um, the famous Morgan and Christian um, from Escape Visuals run that and they yes. do an excellent job keeping up on that. And they let us know all the time, like, hey, like you guys gained this many followers and this more people looked at this and yada, yada, yada. <laughs> so definitely go check out our Instagram. Um, we know we'd love to have you on there we try to keep up and post as much stuff as possible and now with the zambezi zinger coming out we're definitely going to be blowing up our instagram with new zambezi stuff um and then we do have our website uh www.greatcoasters.com um we have all the information about our company on there about our staff um all the coasters that we have built new things coming up our titan track and our new uh infinity flyers so any kind of questions you have check out our website because you might find the answer there. Awesome. Thank you, Olivia. And by the way, you mentioned that Christian and Morgan run your social media. I, I happen to know that from them telling me that a while back. And uh, so I mentioned, you know, the story earlier from this weekend where I rode Thunderhead was just blown away and we all were blown away by it. So I mm-hmm. posted my personal story, uh, which, you know, from Coaster, which, you know, again, also representing Coaster Challenge uh, at that event. Uh, of you know what I thought of and how it shot up my rankings and I I messaged Christian say Christian you check my story I posted something great for GCI <laughs> that you can reshare and he reshared it and you know and 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 so that was great but you know anything I, I, again that's positivity and when you put positivity out to the world again good things come back that's that famous saying but okay. also when you put positivity out the world why not you know try to make it try to get it shared and get that your voice to be louder when you're being positive Absolutely. and that's what, what that was about with me sharing that with christian and uh yeah i mean it, the more positivity the better in this crazy world we live in so yeah yeah exactly exactly yeah. well olivia this has been an absolute joy and pleasure and again positive great positive experience talking today I, I, it's everything i thought it would be and more and, and so thank you for taking the time uh, away from your busy schedule and uh, talk, talking to us. And uh, hopefully this won't be the last time we talk to GCI. I'd love to talk to your dad sometime. I know he's busy with his MBZ right now, but maybe <laughs> we'll have some, some downtime in the winter or something. Um, maybe we can make that happen. It would be uh, great to hear more of his story. But thank you Absolutely. for sharing your story. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Our pleasure. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. If you want to see more of us, we upload every Friday. Be sure to like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, all at Coaster Challenge. Links are in the description below. Thanks for joining us here today.